And we are live. How's everybody doing tonight? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and you're watching and or listening to ABL Live. Thank y'all for joining me tonight. You could be almost anywhere in the world, but you're right here with me live on the show. And I appreciate y'all for that. We got a whole lot going on all over the internet, all over mainstream media, social media, everywhere. And I don't know where to start. First of all, Donald Trump's, uh, what's that? Uh, what is that trial even called? Stormy Daniels, hush money, the kangaroo court, ridiculous nonsense trial in New York City has begun. And he also visited a bodega in Harlem where Jose Alba worked at one point. Remember that story? We'll talk about that whole thing a little bit more a little bit later. Also, we have biblical flooding in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, Oman, also Afghanistan, Pakistan, that whole general area of the world. What's going on? Is it just happenstance? Is it cloud seeding? Nah, it couldn't be cloud seeding, although they've done it 300 times and they've admitted to it. And the whole point is to get it to rain more. But since it rained too much, don't blame the thing that they did to make it rain more. We'll talk about that a little bit more a little bit later. Also, we got tax day drama all over the USA. Some say it's because you have late foulers, but the issue is 99.99% of those out there at IRS offices already filed and they had to do one more step to get the tax returns. We'll talk about that a little bit more a little bit later. Also, Pastor Mark Driscoll rebuking another pastor for inviting a male stripper to a Christian conference. We'll talk about all those things and more on tonight's episode of ABL Live. And thank y'all again for being here. You guys are the best audience anywhere on these interwebs. If you like what you're hearing thus far, please give the video a thumbs up, like the video, share the video, do all that good stuff that helped me out tremendously. We got a whole lot going on. There's a whole lot to discuss. A lot of things that I've not covered, a lot of things that I have, but shout out to you guys. First and foremost, you guys are the best. This is also an audio streaming podcast and it'll be available on your favorite. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hold on. I got to get this water early. Normally I can go no water. I don't know what I did. I think, I think Biden and them didn't put something. <coughs> they put something in the air and they got right here. It got, it got right there in my, in, in my throat pause. So shout out to all you guys. Let me just get back to what I was doing after to get the good water to get myself together. <laughs> this is an audio streaming podcast as well. It'd be available on your favorite audio streaming platforms, whether that be Google Play, Apple iTunes, Spotify, etc. Link for that will be in the description. Or you could just go to your favorite audio streaming platform and search ABL Live. I should pop right up. There we go. There we go. All right. Also, shout out to the sponsors. Shout out to PatriotPost.us, your best source of news and information anywhere on these interwebs. Uh, their link will be in the description or you could just type it into your browser, patriotpost.us. Tell them that ABL sent you. Also go to ablmerch.com. That is A-B-L-M-E-R-C-H dot C-O-M. We got the hats, t-shirts, stickers, hoodies, mugs, and more right there on the website. Again, ablmerch.com. Also, we have anthonyblogan.com. That is A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, the letter B-L-O-G-A-N.com. I'm laughing because somebody said, in no more pause, it's no ditty. Shout out to you, Brent. I appreciate you for that one. That's a good one. You got me to crack a smile on that one. But go to my regular website, anthonyblogan.com. That is A-N-T-H-O-N, by the letter B, L-O-G-A-N.com. Go to the front page of the website. I write articles for each video that I produce. And in each article, you have sources from the left, from the right, from the local, national, international, whatever you need. I got it. All my videos, full form, anything that's legal, I will post on my website, even if it couldn't make it on the YouTubes. Again, anthonyblogan.com. Also, go to anthonyblogan.com forward slash contact. You can find my email address, my snail mail address, my social media accounts, my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Never going to call it X. All those things are right there on the website, anthonyblogan.com. And of course, as I always say, Please don't get scammed. I got a pretty serious scamming story. We're going to cover possibly a little bit later. But some of the more basic things that happen on this channel 
some of you guys fall for it where I post a video and you leave a comment under the video and then someone replies to your comment and they look like me. They may have my picture. They may have my name or a name that looks like mine. But then they say, hey, contact me on this number here. You get contacted on the number. It's 45 digits. It's on WhatsApp. You don't know if the person you're talking to is ABL or if they live in Nigeria, if they live in Lithuania, if they weigh 100 million pounds, or if they shoved in the shoebox with 75 other guys, bald head, okay, five foot tall. You don't know what's going on. So your best bet would be to not engage with these people. It's probably a scam, okay? I'm not a WhatsApp guy. I don't I don't have a 45 digit phone number. All right. It's this is some basic things. So I want you guys to be aware, be safe, don't get scammed, don't get kind. My email is very easy. Contact at anthonyblogan.com. Contact at anthonyblogan.com. And if you can't remember the email, it's on my website. Very easy. I'm really easy to find. Do not get kind. Do not get scammed by these guys talking about get rich quick, Bitcoin, Forex. I don't know nothing about that. Okay, what's Forex? I, uh, wait, the, the number four and the letter X? I have no idea what that is. So this is me talking at you right now live to let you know that it's not me. If it's too good to be true, it is. So 2024, don't nobody got time to get scammed. All righty. Now, we have a whole lot going on. Shout out to you guys again. You guys are the best audience anywhere on these interwebs. And if you like what you are hearing thus far, please give the video a thumbs up. Like the video, share the video, do all that good stuff. That'll help me out tremendously. Okay. You don't, uh, <laughs> you, you, you don't set up Ubers using your voice, do you? I've never heard about somebody calling the Uber. Somebody says, you set up the Uber using that voice. Last time I called... There was no phone number to call Uber. It's like, yo, can I get a ride? It's an app. <laughs> you know, like, this ain't 1997. Like, let's move forward into the future. And that was a pretty serious story about the man that um, got scammed. I'm going to touch on that right quick because it's pretty heavy. I'm going to get it out the way early. So the old man that got scammed in Ohio, he's 81 years old, and people were calling his phone, his house phone, over and over again, talking about, his relative was in trouble and he needed to pay $12,000 or else something bad was going to happen. Maybe the relative might get hurt. Maybe he might get hurt. All this and that. They were telling the man, okay, put the money in the box and leave it outside and somebody would come pick it up. Then a 61 year old woman got an Uber notification to go to an address to pick up a box, pick up a package. And the two of them converge. She goes to the house. She's barely able to walk. She's hobbling around. He is the same way, 81 years old. He doesn't really know what's going on 100%. He's getting scammed by some random voice on the phone. They converge. He has a gun and he kills her as she's hobbling the way back to her car can barely move can't she has she's no threat to him at all but as people are saying it's, it's kind of a divisive thing but not really ultimately i think both sides were scammed some say that she was in on it but to me it doesn't make any sense first of all there's no evidence for that so people could say that but there's no evidence there's evidence that he was scammed because when the officers were at the man's house the scammers called so there's evidence that the man was scammed but there's no evidence that she was not scammed. Somebody could have sent an Uber to pick up a package. And some say, well, I didn't know Uber picks up packages. Well, look, I don't know all these technologies. Like a lot of you guys use Uber to bring you food. So why wouldn't the same Uber use to pick up something from you? If Uber can be used to give a package to you directly, like some food or some of you guys got Ubers going to the grocery store and getting small items, a bag of chips. I've seen it. I saw somebody going to the grocery store. I saw, I saw a door dasher and Costco with a whole cart full of stuff. I've seen it. So I don't know how these apps are really used to deliver things, to pick up things. If an app can be used to deliver things,
things, why can't they be used the other way around to pick up things? I don't really know. But the story is that she was brought there by the Uber ride to pick up a package. Also, if she was quote unquote in on it, why would she be taping it? Because she had a dash cam. The reason why we saw the unfortunate killing or the events that led up to it is because she had a dash cam that was rolling. So why would this 61 year old lady who's barely able to walk around hobbling with a dash cam, why would she go and try to steal this man's money? To me, it doesn't make any sense. I think they are both scam victims. He thought that somebody was out to kill him and they were going to take his money. And then she doesn't know what's going on. She's just doing her job. They converge. And then she, she dies. Yeah. Uh, Shout out to you, Fifth Cup of Coffee. Fifth Cup of Coffee says, um, I wonder that too. She could have had someone not for her too. Sad story for both. What I think happened was very simple. What I think happened was that the man was getting scammed. And sometimes elderly people do get scammed like this and they give up, they give up a lot of money. You see all the time. I saw a story where a man sold his house and gave the money to a scammer. 700000 $700,000. He sold his house and gave all the cash to a scammer and it's gone. I mean, his retirement, his nest day, all of that gone. So I believe that the 81 year old man thought that he was really in danger if he didn't give up $12,000. So what probably happens is a lot of times they pony up the money, they put it in the box and they send somebody who doesn't know anything to pick up the money. That's usually what happens because here's the thing about it. Number one, if you know what's going on and you know it's $12,000 in that box, first of all, you're probably going to be tempted to open the box and run off with the money. Look, okay, if they recruit some random person from the street to steal this money to deliver the package from the man's house to somewhere else, what are you going to pay them? What, $500 or something like that? If I am going to go steal some money and it's $12,000 in there and they're paying me 500, what I'm going to do is steal the money and run off. What are they going to do? What are some scammers who don't even live in the U S at all? What are they going to do about it? Nothing. But see, that's not what happened. What happened was she was scammed too and they meet and then now she's gone and he is in jail some say shouldn't have got charged, but it's like, well, how can you do that? Because ultimately she wasn't armed and she wasn't there to hurt him. He may have thought something that was not true, but why does that mean it's okay for her to be gone? It's a sad situation on both sides. It's sad that he was set up and it's sad that she was set up too. What are you going to do? It's, it's really just messed up. Yeah. So, you know, I know I joke a lot about scams and whatnot online the scams that kind of happen here sometimes or that uh, that are attempted on my channel and other channels as well, anybody with any kind of following, if you got 10,000 followers sometimes, maybe even less than that or more, then you can have scammers on your page impersonating you. I've seen it all the time. But what I'm talking about here is nothing compared to some of the bigger things that happen. Some of the phone scams and then you're talking about the swatting Y'all know I've been swatted before, okay? And then it's both sides that are going to be scammed. You're going to, well, you're going to have both sides that are affected. The police are being scammed because they're told that somebody is, uh, they got a, a bunch of people in the house bleeding out. They got little kids in the basement tied up, all kind of crazy stuff. So the police get this call anonymously and they got to go investigate and see what's going on. And then I'm just minding my business streaming. And then they run in the house, get on the ground. I'm not doing anything wrong. They're not doing anything wrong. We just happened to converge because of what a third party did. So I put the blame squarely on the third party and not so much on the individuals who were involved. Although there are some consequences if one of the individuals does something they shouldn't do. Just like one case in the swatting situation, an officer shot his gun and killed the guy. That was a swatting victim, but the officer shit in the shot, but he shouldn't have been put in that position to do what he did. Although what he did was wrong. Overall, it's just a really bad situation. 
yeah, he didn't have to kill. He didn't have to kill, but again, he's 81 years old. Do you guys think that he was really in his right state of mind? If you are being fooled over the phone about some people coming to get you, like you're just a random guy. Who are you? You're a random old man in your house, and somebody's calling your house phone from who knows where. They probably got an accent, but you're 81. You're not really 100% sound of mind. You might be a military veteran or something like that. So you got some of that instinct still there, but you're not sharp enough to use it properly. So it's just a bad combination, really bad combination. All right. But if you like what you are hearing so far, please give the video a thumbs up, like the video, share the video, do all that good stuff that'll help me out tremendously. Shout out to you, Luke Paul, free agent. Yeah, I was swatted, old Joe. I was swatted a few years ago. Some of you guys were here when that happened. When was that, you guys? Was that like 2018, 19? I don't really remember. It was some years ago. Yeah, it probably was about five to six years ago. Yeah, it was crazy. I I'll tell you guys a swatting story right quick, and then I'll move on to the some more lighthearted stuff. So some years ago, and again, some of y'all were there for this. Some years ago, back when I lived at another house, um, I remember like it was yesterday. So I'm getting ready to stream, and then somebody calls my phone from an unknown number, like right when the stream started, like right at eight o'clock or like two minutes before. And I'm sitting at my desk at the old house. Somebody calls my phone. I pick up and they hang right up. I don't think nothing. I'm like, okay, that's weird. Random phone call, whatever. As I'm streaming a little while into it, I'm hearing some commotion outside. Now at this time where I lived, it was like on a small hill and I had a neighbor Kind of hard to explain, but the way you pull up to my house, it was a hill in front of my house and grass was kind of like sloping down to the street below. So to get to my house, it's like a horseshoe kind of ramp that goes alongside the side of the hill. So you come up the horseshoe ramp, you could pull up and go straight to the back. It was a house back there behind my house, or you could pull behind my house with a small deck. It's a small house. 1,500 square foot at max. I'm renting house at this point. You could go up the horseshoe ramp and go all the way back to where it kind of levels out on top of the hill. It was a neighbor back there. I'm right kind of in the middle. If you took a left on the horseshoe, you could be right in front of my house. And if you continue, you could be at my neighbor's house who live over here to the, to the left. So if you see the hill from the ground, my house is right in the center, a house on the left, and then the house behind me. You follow me? So I'm streaming, and out of my window, I'm hearing some commotion. Now, my window was facing the front of the house where my neighbors, who were on the left of me, are. I'm hearing my neighbor out on their porch, which they will always be there. It's all kind of commotion. It's the police. Kill the ground, kill the ground. I'm hearing that. I'm like, oh, man, somebody got arrested. And my neighbors, sometimes they would have issues like that. Okay, sometimes they'd be doing things. And um, they, they were white, but they're real cool, though. Shout out to them. Um, My back neighbor was black guy, real cool guy, him and his wife and his kids or whatever. But anyway, I'm hearing that. I'm like, man, somebody getting arrested. And then at the time, I was with my wife at this time. And I, at this time, we, we were not married at this time. She was, she was happy to be at the house. So I'm streaming in the upstairs. In my window, I could, I could hear out. She knocks on my door, and she's like, hey, they're outside. She didn't say the police were outside, but she said they're outside. I already knew what it was. I already knew it was the police at the back door. Because remember, if you go up the horseshoe ramp, you could take a left and be right at the front in my front door or go up the hill in the back of my house, which is the upstairs part because the house is built into the hill. So they came on the back of the horseshoe ramp and parked where my car was in that small little deck. So I already know what it is. I turn my camera like this. I put, I put my camera like this because I know that they're going to try to see what's going on. I already know what it is. So I go to the back. You got six cops, guns drawn, get on the ground. So me and her, we get on the ground on a little small little deck and they go through their house. They search briefly. It's a small house. They going through closets. They ain't turned the house up. They were just kind of searching gingerly. I think they knew what time it was because they saw my room with the streaming set up. They already knew what it was. 
And they came back and said that somebody told them that I had a 13 year old tied up and they were bleeding and all kind of stuff. And then there was a report of a gunshot. It made the local news. Oh, a gunshot on X, Y, and Z street. But there was no gunshot. There was no 13 year old tied up. It was nothing. And they were very respectful, very apologetic. Uh, my man who was the lead on the whole thing gave me his car, gave me his number. And I spoke to him since then. Really cool people. But yeah, that was a swatting attempt. Now, I 100% complied. I was like, you know what? Let me get on the ground. Let's just chill. Because I knew that if I'm bucking and asking questions, it could have went wrong because one officer could have been having a bad day or I could have made the wrong move. And then now, not only is me, but it's her too. We might mess around and get shot, get injured, but nothing happened. It was all good. But yeah, I did get swatted and that was my swatting story. Yep. So yeah, it was crazy. Um, but nothing happened after that. It just gave me, the uh, my man gave me his number. Very apologetic, shook my hand afterward, and that was it. All right. So, and the thing about swatting, a lot of times they use anonymous numbers, so you can't really, you can track them, but it's kind of hard to track them. It's kind of hard to do it on them as well. But ever since then, I've been able to figure out ways to kind of obfuscate um, my personal information online. This would be a good spot for an ad, but I'm not going to put an ad right here because I got some deals coming I'm not going to do an ad. I'm not going to do an ad. But what I will say is, without shouting the companies out, I have a service where a lot of my information online is obfuscated and you can't really tell exactly where I'm at. Also, I know the local sheriff here. Shout out to my main man, Austin Garrett. I know uh, the mayor, uh, the, the county mayor. I met Bill Lee. I met a lot of people out here who are in government, who are in law enforcement. So... I don't really have any kind of issues. If they see something come up on my house, it's to the point where it's like this. If they see something, Anthony Logan, I might get a phone call. Like, okay, is everything all right? Is everything good? Because, you know, you build relationships like that. That's kind of how it goes. In my area, in my opinion, at least, that's how it is. All right. So, yeah. Shout out to the officers and... Swatting is a really serious thing. This is part of the reason why I would say that they both were victims because that's how they do. That's how swatters do. That's how scammers do. They victimize both sides for their own enjoyment or for their own benefit. In this case, I think it was because of the money. They put the lady at risk and the man at risk to try and steal some money. In the case of a swatter, they put the police at risk and the person, the streamer at risk to get entertainment. That's how that goes. But if you like what you heard so far, if you like what you're hearing so far, please give the video a thumbs up, like the video, share the video, do all that good stuff. That'll help me out tremendously. Uh, let me see. Uh, Medi says, too bad most people are not as rational as you. Yeah, but, you know, people got to be rational. I already knew what it was. I was, I was already ready for that kind of situation. As soon as I heard them outside, I knew they could come to my house. I knew it could be. A swatting and then when it came to the back I was like okay when it came to the back before I went to the door I was thinking okay how am I going to handle it what am I going to do next what's going to be my next course of action am I going to just already knew hands up get on the ground all right you got it never mind you got six seven eight cops guns drawn on me I'm not going to do nothing but just get on the ground and I know it ain't nothing in here I'm living right I don't got no cocaine I don't got no weed or nothing crazy I'm living right. There's no problems. A lot of times people start bucking on the cops because they know they dirty and they got something they shouldn't have. See, I'm already ready for whatever. If an officer was to come to my house right now on some kind of false allegation, they would, they would, they would find nothing at all. Nothing in, at, at all. Not one drop of cocaine or anything like that. Shout out to my main man, AM1. I see you in the chat, boss. What AM1 say? AM1 said, yo, ABL, salute, sir, sir, sir. Shout out to you, man. I appreciate you. And LXD says, were any of the cops cute when you were swatted? This guy or girl, I don't know what's going on. Okay, I'm not into um, men. You might be in the wrong stream. I don't know. You might want to go somewhere else. You might want to go over there. <laughs> you might, you might want to go 
over to a whole different side of the internet. Okay. That ain't what we do over here. There was no female cops. So, and at the end of the day, even if there were female cops at that point, I don't even care. I'm just trying to not get deleted on my back deck of my house. <laughs> you know, I ain't worried about that. Horn dog where they cute. Uh, only, only some horny frog would be like at the, at gunpoint, six guns in the face. Hey, these cops are hot. <laughs> it's like, sir, sir, how about your life though? All right. I'm, I'm not trying to have no hot lid hit me in my hind parts or in my forehead. How about that? All right. But I'm getting triggered. Uh, let's keep on rocking and rolling here. Now, shout out to, um, <laughs> shout, shout out to Kamala Harris and the nostalgia that she put out. So rather than the border being secure, rather than student loans being a thing they wanted to really champion as they were trying to promise during the campaign, rather than anything of substance, this is what we got for you. Okay. A different world. This is a, a 1990s uh, TV show about a black college, a fictional black college. And that's all we got. This kind of went viral. It has like on Twitter, it has like 4 million views. This is all we got for you. Okay, so if you don't know what's going on, this is a theme song to A Different World, a 90s TV show that was a spinoff of The Cosby Show, okay? And it was about a black college, a fictional, um, is it fictional? Hillman, is that a real place? I don't think so. So you got a lot of the cast of A Different World in the building. Um, of course, Sinbad was on A Different World as well. But Sinbad had a stroke recently, so he's not there. And I'm not sure if anybody else was on the cast that's not there. Um, yeah, I think that might be the cast, except for Sinbad. A different world. Ooh, and, when come from and I don't know why Kamala Harris, you know, but, you know, Kamala Harris, I said it before. Kamala Harris, what they have her do is any kind of minority outreach. And... She can be whatever minority she needs to be. If she needs to be Asian, she could be Asian. Throwing a red dot on the forehead, and now all of a sudden she's Asian. Okay? Put on the black girl accent with the swoop bang, then she could be black. All right? Whatever kind of minority outreach needs to be done, we could do that. This is what they got for you. You want to vote Democrats? Okay, rather than actual policy, rather than actual things that are going to help you in your life, rather than following through, with promises, we're going to give you nostalgia. And you guys are right. Somebody said Lisa Bonet. Yeah, Lisa Bonet's not there. Um, and also, Sinbad is living. Yeah, Marisa Tomei. Shout out to Marisa Tomei. And uh, Lisa Bonet and Sinbad. All right. But yeah. Oh, that's right. Kamala did go to um, Howard. That's right. Shout out to you, LXDX. Yeah, shout out to you, boss. She did go to Howard. All right, and then okay. here we have Corinne Jean-Pierre dancing with the cast of a different world. So there we go. Okay, rather than anything... Any kind of policy decisions, anything like that. We got Corinne Jean-Pierre chucking the jive in literally in the White House. And uh, if you guys didn't know, Corinne Jean-Pierre was married to Suzanne Malveaux, a white woman who worked for CNN. And they have a adopted daughter together, I believe. So, yeah, it's, it's always like that. The most pro-black, blackity blacks don't relive that way. It's all, it's all, it's all a game. It's all, it's all just for, 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 for pretend for play, play. Okay. It's always like that. You go to a black college, blackity black singing, all this stuff. But it, you know, meanwhile, you're married to a whole white woman. How'd that work? Nothing against anybody that's interracially married, but it's always the most woke It's always the most pro whack that do stuff like that, which is weird. It's, it's like an oxymoron. You're trying to overcompensate. But anyway, I digress. So that's our, um, 
that's the beginning of our cringe. That is the beginning of our cringe. We have more cringe, okay? Let's shoot to some protesters, shall we? Now, um, shout out to Andy No, good people, met him before, really good guy. Uh, his caption says, at the far left, direct action where protesters shut down the Golden Gate Bridge San Francisco, a protester pretends to scream in pain as first responders cut him free from a large lock device. Check it out. Okay, hold on. By the numbers. All right, let go of your fingers. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. They're not twisting it. You're just holding on to this piece of steel that's not attached to anything. Okay? All you got to do is just let go and you'll be able to be free. Let go of the bar. Let go of the bar. Let go of the bar. Come on. Let go. Stop Let go of the bar. My hand. Let go of the bar. Stop squeezing my hand. Let go of the bar. <laughs> He's like, let go of the bar. That's how I feel. That's the frustration setting in. I mean, at a certain point, man, can we get a taser? Z -z -z, hit him right quick, and then boom, bada bing, bada boom. Now he's holding metal, so that might be a bad idea. That might be a conductor, but whatever, man. Don't nobody got time for that. Squeezing my hand and twisting it. The rebar is cutting the, the inside of my hand. Stop prying my fingers. The bar. Stop prying. Stop. 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 Let go of the rebar. Stop. You're hurting me. Let go of the rebar. He's free. He's free. He's free. He's free. He's free. Take him out. They like little kids, man. They like little children. Be crying hard for no reason at all, just to get some attention. Crying, crying, crying. Okay, little boy don't got no injury, no nothing, no no diaper change, no injury. It's like, why are you crying? Why? You put on baby shark all of a sudden, you stop crying. Okay. Yes, sir. On the bike. The bike. Do you need EMS? Yes. Yes. You need to be seen by a Look, man, I don't understand the purpose. I think these were um, like pro Gaza or whatever people. It's like, what are you doing? Like, what is the what is the actual purpose of getting on the, the worst protesters? You know, there are certain people I just dislike in this world. Certain kinds of people, people that do certain things, the people on the ground blocking traffic have got to be the worst. I've not encountered them in real, in real life quite yet. And I hope I don't encounter them in real life. I don't want to be the guy. Listen, I don't want to be the guy who's right in front of these people. I don't want to be in my truck or the, or the Mustang who's the, the first car to get blocked off by these people. Man, listen, it's going to be twisted metal. <laughs> it's going to be twisted metal, Grand Theft Auto, all that good stuff, allegedly. Let's extend the legs. Yep, we're going to get And his sign says, this is what you do during a genocide, I think. And you can see the picture, the kind of wide view. They kind of got like these, these barrels. And they look how you thought they would look. <laughs> you know, you, you could pretty much tell what's going on here. Man, look, and don't nobody got time for that, man. I come out there with a whole backhoe, put him in the backhoe, and just be like, all right, man, let's go. We, we don't have time for all this stuff, all right? Like, get out of the way. All right, now, they they handle it a little bit differently in Florida, if I could find that one. And you guys, uh, bear with me for a minute. I got to find that one. They handle it a, a teach bit different in Florida. All right. Shout out to Florida. Florida. Florida knows the way. That's got to hurt. They, they're like linked together with some kind of pipe. I don't know what that is. Some kind of PVC pipe they're linked together with. I don't know if they're holding hands in there. 
if they got their arms locked, but it might not feel too good to get dragged while you're linked to somebody with a PVC pipe. You know, they, they kind of remind me of, as I'm seeing them get dragged, legs and pipes and all that kind of stuff, those little squiggly things outside of a dealership, it's kind of what they remind me of in real life. So, yeah, I mean, Florida, they don't play no games. Okay, you want to link together with PVC pipe. You want to try to block the road. We're not going to, we're going to drag you off the road and allow the traffic to continue. That's what we're going to do. And that is the way. Shout out to Florida. And if you guys wanted a bigger, a, a wider view of the Golden Gate Bridge, kerfuffle, here we go right here. All right. And it says, stop the world for Gaza. Man, look. I would hate to be, hold on, you see this car right here? They got the banner on the car. I would hate to be that car right there. Listen, you're going to get all this horsepower. You're going to get all this horsepower. I'm going to I'm gonna have the top drop down. You guys are going to go for a ride with me. You guys are going to be uh, hit off in the back seat. Just, just go for a ride, all right? Your banner, whatnot, it's going to be all over into the water. It's going to be all in the San Francisco. It's going to be all in the San Fran Bay. Cause I don't got time. And you got the officers right there at the bottom, just kind of watching what's going on. And there's only a handful of these people, man, please. Yeah. You're going to be in the back seat. You're going to be like the cartoons flipped up into the back seat of the car. Look at this. They got the, the banner on top of the vehicle. That must be their car that they put up right here. It's gotta be. And it says end the siege on Gaza now with, with little doves. Okay, little, little birds, I guess. That might be a dove. Yeah, nah, we're not, we're not tolerating that kind of behavior at all. Not, not down here. Like I said, I've not uh, witnessed any kind of behavior like that in my neck of the woods. All right, and then there's a mass caravan in Detroit of pro, I guess you would say pro-Palestine people. Man, look, I tell you what, I don't care how pro I am one country or another. I'm not getting my hood wraps with the flag of that country. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that for the USA, and I love the USA. We're the best. I love my country, but I'm not putting an American flag wrap on my hood of my Toyota Tercel or whatever kind of car it is right there. Yeah, I'm not putting the American flag just on the hood of my Nissan Altima. I'm not doing it. Got the little um the, the head the head wraps and all that kind of stuff in there. I see that. That's very popular. I think these people just follow trends. Whatever's popular on the internet, whatever they see online, they want to do it. Monkey see, monkey do. I'm gonna just do whatever I see the next person do. I see it on TikTok, and it is a thing that I'm interested in. I'm gonna just go ahead and copy that kind of behavior. That's what I see. Now, here's something else about cars to get away from the the blocking the road. Um it's going to be a little bit of cussing here. Well, actually quite a bit of cussing. So y'all please bear with me now in this scenario, what would you do? What is your next course of action? If you see this going on outside your house. Now I think what's happening. You got some people trying to steal the car. I think it's a, a Corvette or something right there. I can't tell what that is. It might be a Corvette. Check it out. Fuck you come out. Don't fucking, Don't fucking come, come out. out! You fucking come out, I'm gonna shoot you! Don't come out! Do not come out! 
It's a fucking car. Don't lose your life. Don't don't have... Do not lose your life over a fucking car. So sorry for the cussing, but basically they're telling the people, and that's by the way, California, San Jose, San Fran, Bay Area, same place. We just we just we were just at the San Fran. We got the we got the people blocking the roads, and now we got somebody trying to steal your car in front of your house. Okay, they got a forerunner right there. Shout out to the forerunner gang. And then they got what appears to be a Corvette, white Corvette, nice, you no, know, like a little C8 type action, C7, C8. So they want to steal the vehicle. And I guess the guy has said something to him through the doorbell camera. And they're saying, hey, don't come out your effing house. Don't lose your life over a car. Imagine hearing that. Now, if that's you and that situation, and you got a few guys out here next to your car, I count at least four to five guys. If that's you, what are you going to do? And somebody said, coming out. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Some say, look, ABL, you don't need an AR-15. You don't need that many rounds. Well, maybe I might have four or five guys who want to party. If you want to party, okay, let's party. But in order for me to party with five guys, I'm going to need a lot of ammunition. All right, I'm going to need a lot of ammunition, a lot of firepower to party with five guys. So it is what it is. <laughs> Somebody said rooftop Korean time. Shout out to you, NKM. Roof, rooftop Korean time at that point. Exactly. You fucking come on, I'm going to shoot you. So, yeah, um, that's a tough situation. But, you know, it's, it's California. And California, you're... Limited to a 10-round magazine in your rifle. 10 rounds. Look, man, I got five guys. It's only two rounds per guy. It's not enough. Okay, I ain't trying to have to, you know, drop in a whole new mag midway. I'm trying to go ahead and just have 30 or more. Maybe even 100 if I need to, but at least 30 to, you know, be accurate because sometimes I'm not going to be a, a super marksman. As simple as that. So, yeah, shout out to you guys. You know what to do. Y'all already know what it is. Y'all know what the, the best course of action should be. Now, there's a lot I want to say. Um, you guys may have seen this future car thief, this future gang member, Lil RT. Now, can I explain who he is right quick? Lil RT has rap songs. I'm not going to play it here. But he has rap songs and his lyrics completely vulgar, like the same way an adult would do. He's nine years old. OK, and I don't know who is responsible. I'm sure he has some kind of guardian at nine years old. His mom or his dad or somebody is allowing him to do this kind of stuff. I'm talking sexually explicit, all of that at nine years old. OK, he's gone viral. He's been the talk of a lot of podcasts because this is ridiculous why do we have this little boy out here rapping this way okay now somebody's asking him some basic questions some basic questions now remember i'm gonna say this right quick that, that's him right there a little boy nine years old rapping like an adult violence drugs sexually explicit stuff really crazy now i've said it before if you cannot read on grade level by the third grade, which is age eight, if you cannot read on grade level in the third grade, you're toast. The likelihood of you being a proficient reader or successful in life at all after that is slim to none. Yes, it's possible, but it's also possible to win the lottery. Are you going to do it? I doubt it. Now, somebody... And the adult is asking him a question. And this is going to shock you, but it's not going to shock you. Three plus three. What's three plus three? Uh, three plus three? Four. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, bitch. Six. Six. Three plus three is six. What's five plus four? Five plus four. Yeah. Five plus four, okay. I don't, yo, King, shut the fuck up. Don't say it. <laughs> You know what you need to start doing? Your multiplication tables and stop cursing in your music, bro. Let me, but you can say let it and you can get the egg out of my family. Uh, take your bitch down. Yeah, man. Nigga, stop talking like that. Nigga, you need to learn your multiplication tables. <sighs> <sighs> I 
I'll, I'll have no words, man. You know what? That whole car, listen, if you add all the IQ points in that car, you're not going to break triple digits. <laughs> if you add all of the IQ points in that car, you're not going to break triple digits. The guy asking the questions is barely smarter than the little boy who can't even add three plus three, five plus four, basic stuff. Five plus four, what's that? I don't know. I'm nine years old. I don't know what five plus four is. Other countries, Asia and whatnot, they're already doing advanced math at that age. If you don't know what five plus four is at nine, 10 years old, at that point, just go ahead and become a gang member. Practice your, your gang signs. Practice gang signs rather than your multiplication, your division. Just, just, just do that and get it over with. Or here's something else. Figure out a way to, I don't know, man, just do something, man. Figure out a way to sell ice cream cones differently than the next guy. I don't know, man, but you get all these rap songs talking about this violent stuff, cussing and acting the fool, but you have zero brain power, nothing, a hamster in your head, a hamster. It's crazy. It's totally crazy. Chris Falcon says, my boy is three and can already count to 100. Shout out to you and your boy. You're doing the right thing. That little boy's parents, I mean, they focused on getting that money from the rap music. The, the completely ignorant bars, ignorant bars. I don't know what five plus four is, but I got rap music people like. Okay. It, yeah, practice your gang signs because you're going to just be doing that all day long. Throw, throw your hood up. Do that all day long. Now, speaking of hoods, Chicago, we got a migrant who is very excited to get a free ticket to Chicago. He is from Madara, Russia, originally, but he's getting a free ride to Chicago. Check it out. Yes, they give me a ticket for free to Chicago. I fly tomorrow. For free? For free. Why yes. are you going to Chicago? I try to find any work because I'm homeless emigrant from Russian Federation. Yo, my name is Mark Miriam. Here You're from are. Russia? Yeah. Who gave you the ticket to go to Chicago? Now, he appears to be in New York City right now, but he's from Russia, Russian Federation, and he's getting a free ticket to Chicago. Chicago, no, this special government service company, you know, they try to help new people, new immigrants who come. You're here. excited to go to Chicago? Yeah, because I want to see new city. It will be, I want to feel new vibe, a new atmosphere, and maybe try to find new contacts, new friends. It must be nice. It must be nice to be able to get free tickets to go travel. Yeah, I want to experience a new city. Gosh, me too. <laughs> Can I get a free ticket? Can I get free room, board, all of that? Can I, can I get that? Or is that only for the migrants? Is that only for the illegal aliens? Okay, you're an illegal alien. You get to live the American dream better than Americans. Paid for by Americans. You could be a migrant and live the American dream better than Americans on the American taxpayer dime. Must be nice. So you, know. you were in New York for one year. Yes. And now you're, you got a free ticket and now you're going to go to Chicago. That is Savannah Air interviewing them. Yes, Danny, shout out to you. Shout out to Danny. Shout out to, um, pardon me, uh, shout out to Savannah from Turner Point USA Frontlines. Da, da. S Savannah Hernandez. Uh, and then after Chicago, I go into Los Angeles because it was my first city in my life before New York. Did you get a free ticket to go to Los Angeles as well? Yeah, if I mark them. But uh, at, this, at this moment, I, um, I have like uh, one friend in Chicago. And it will be new experience of, of, for me, you know. So you stayed in New York for a year, then you're going to go to Chicago, yeah. and then you want to go to L.A. After. Yeah, I try to get any work to Chicago uh, to collect, you know, and to fly to... But maybe something happens with me in Chicago. Maybe I find good work, good friends, and I will be living in Chicago. So I don't know about future. So, yeah, I mean, hey, you could be an illegal alien from Russia, come through the border illegally. You could just be chilling in New York fly to LA, fly to Chicago. You could be just jet setting, going wherever you want to go for free. It's no, no big deal. Free food, housing, clothing, shelter, whatever you want, you got it. 
Why? Because you are an illegal alien. And illegal aliens at a certain point have precedent over regular U.S. American citizens. Now, here are some of the migrants complaining about the foods that they're getting. Okay, so not only are you able to be in New York City, get all kind of benefits, you get to complain about the kind of food you receive. And man, look, I don't like that. That ain't really. Yeah, I'm in the shelter. Yeah, I'm homeless. But can I get better food? I mean, it, it won't really spicy. It ain't had no seasoning. You know, it's not really halal. It's haram. It's, it's Ramadan. We got to eat the proper foods, huh? Let's watch this. <laughs> But at the shelter, the food, my kids cannot eat the food at the shelter. And on, on Ramadan time, we couldn't eat because when you come back for on the breaks, the food is no good at all. And they give us two months to stay at the shelter and then you have to go out again with your luggages and the kids and find another place. It's very difficult. So what? So what? Like, at the end of the day, you came here. So, check it out. You got a country of origin. Unlike me, I'm not a migrant. I'm not an expat. I'm not deracinated from a previous country. I'm an American. Born American. Dying American. American, American, American. I have no previous country. No country of origin to return to. You do. What language is that that you're speaking? I have no idea. I speak American. Do you? I can't tell. Harai, don't know very much. You know, Saturday. Me, pay kung ang kadi janung kung umomari Disney vang Disney Disney. Antr dong owa wal he bude hajo ni komo janga. Some kind of French, but it's not like French French. So I'm not really sure where they're from. Maybe some kind of like West African, uh, Burkina Faso, somewhere like that. I can't really tell. And also, I have a kids that is like 18 to 19. Until now, he doesn't have no school. Mm. So please help us. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not with it. I am, I am not with it, but yeah. It must be nice to be able to come from wherever you come from, somewhere, West Africa, uh, some West African uh, Muslim country with French speaking and come to the USA, speak no English, and make demands. Somebody says Algeria, Somali. I don't, I don't, th I don't think it was Somali because that's not, they all speak French and Somalia. They speak Somali. It ain't, it's more like an Arabic language. East African is much different. Um, Algeria, that's mostly white people. It could be Algerians, maybe. But Algeria, Morocco, that's mostly like Southern European. It's not really, it's not really um, sub, sub Saharan Africans, but it's, it's possibly. All right. <laughs> Some of y'all are crazy. All right. Senegal could be Senegal. Yeah. All right. Let's keep on rocking and rolling. We got uh, we got a lot more. Now, here is a protest of some of the migrants that you just saw. And it says massive groups of illegal aliens are swarming New York City Hall, demanding green cards and work visas. They were falsely promised to them, according to reports. <laughs> What's going on here? What's going on here? What are you guys doing? What are you, what are you guys doing over here? Why are you guys in line here? What the fuck is going on? Look at all that. Look at how deep they are. Look at how deep. But, you know, Joe Biden says the border's closed. What Kamala say? Don't come. The border's not open. I can't tell. The border's wide open. And they not only letting them in, they're coming here demanding rights. Hey, we want to get this. We want to get that. We want to get, 
We want to get everything that we feel like we're entitled to. Okay, protesting. My thing is, yo, you know what? You have a country of origin. I don't. I'm here. This is my country of origin. So you could you could go back to your country of origin too. If it's like that, if you're not getting what you need here, and don't need even protesting, it's the same way I feel about these people that come from the, the, the college students. When you have college students that protest their college, I'm like, why are you protesting your college? At the end of the day, you don't have to go to college or you could go to a different college. You have options. So if it's so bad here, if you're not getting what you want, then you can return. And it's not really too much else to it. Now, on a lighter note, shout out to my main man, Donald Trump. You guys know that Trump has the Stormy Daniels trial. And this trial is so weird because it's not even really about her. It's about the so-called hush money. So basically, in a nutshell, and now if I'm wrong, you let me know in the comments. In a nutshell, the trial is over whether Trump paid the money properly or not. Whether he went through the correct channels or not to pay the money to Stormy Daniels. And they're trying to say that his paying of the money was an effort to interfere with the election. It's like, what? The dumbest ticky tack BS you ever heard in your life. But this is where we are, 2024, kangaroo courts, banana republic. That's just what it is. All right. But they say the people hate Trump. Matter of fact, hold on. I got to find something right quick. And shout out to my main man, Lou Valentino, who was out there with the people in Harlem when Trump went to the bodega. Um, There was a guy, I think he was some kind of politician out there talking about uh, Trump and saying that he wasn't welcome, all this, that, and the third. I got to find that particular quote if I can. And we keep on rocking and rolling here. But if you like what you're hearing thus far, please give the video a thumbs up, like the video, share the video, do all that good stuff that'll help me out tremendously. Yeah, because there was a quote from somebody talking about, oh, Trump's not welcome. He, you know, nobody wants him here. But obviously, he was welcome. He is welcome. The people on the ground appear to love Trump. They'll say that's not the case, but it is. All right. Now, here we go with the youngins. And you're going to see I love you, Trump. I love right here, right above the kid. There is your main man, Lou Valentino, right there. Great YouTuber. Y'all guys go ahead and subscribe to him. I love you, Trump. I love you, Trump. We love 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 Trump. But they say that Trump is, you know, orange man bad. He's racist. Minorities hate him. I can't tell. Now, again, this is right outside the bodega in Harlem where Jose Alba had to defend himself against some um, some pookie that got activated to go hurt him because the girl's card had declined. All right. Remember that whole story from about a couple of years ago? I'm going to find that for you guys right quick. I'm going to pull up the clip of that so you can see exactly what's happening. And then we're going to keep on rocking and rolling here. But shout out to my main man, Jose Alba, for defending himself. All right, remember this? Now, this was, again, Jose Alba is being pushed, being attacked by this guy. All Jose Alba, the, the clerk, the cashier, at the bodega in Harlem, all that he did was simply take the woman's, uh, just just be at the counter. The woman tried to buy some things. Her car was not working. Her car kept declining. He's like, look, I, what am I to do? The car's not working. So she decides to call her boyfriend, s- some dude, and he confronts the the clerk. He hops behind the counter. He's a place. He's in a place where he shouldn't be, and then. He is attacking my man. But Poppy was prepared. Poppy had a blade and deleted the pookie right there. Okay. 
So, and he's trying to like not fight. He's trying to not fight. He's trying to just, you see the arm right there. Stop, stop. But look, why are you trying to say stop now when you already activated him? <laughs> okay. It's like taking the bowling ball, going through your whole stance and releasing the ball down the lane and then trying to hop on the lane to stop from hitting the pins. You already then rolled the ball. You've already pitched the ball down the lane. Why stop it now? All you're going to do is get on the lane that's waxed and bust your head clean open on the ground. You've already set the ball in motion. Why try to stop it now? But Poppy not trying to fight. He's trying to like de-escalate. He's trying to be cool. But the Pookie is not relenting. All right, he's still up on them. And now pulling the pants up, doing all kind of stuff, all in his face, menacing, just doing way too much. He's still sitting there chilling, not trying to fight. But he's trying to leave. And as he's trying to leave, the guy's not letting him leave. And that's when the blade comes out and my man gets deleted right here. He got deleted. Now, after he got deleted, Jose Albert gets locked up. The man who defended himself, clearly, he gets locked up in Rikers. And he got sick while in Rikers. It was a whole big ordeal. They had to get national attention. They had to get the Bodega Association. They had to get everybody to get this man out of Rikers. Because Alvin Bragg charged him with murder. When it should have been no charges, when it was a clear self-defense case. Look, I'm the cashier. Minding my business. Here come this guy, all aggressive behind the counter, pushing me. I don't want no problems. I'm trying to leave. He's he's grabbing by my neck, trying to fight me. Stab, 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 stab. Now I'm gonna leave. You dead okay? That's it. You dead okay? That's I, that's no that's not me. You dead? That's it. Open and shut. But check it out. If you wanna. Attack people unprovoked, you get no bail, zero bail, and get let out in the streets. The migrants that stomped out the police officers in Times Square, they did that on camera and were released no bail. Illegal aliens attacking cops released no bail. Hardworking man in the store, minding his business, is a victim, defends himself. He gets locked up and can't get out. Make that make sense. So I think my man, the, the clerk, Jose Alba, has gone back to Dominican Republic. And I don't blame him because what he went, what he went through in New York City was just way too much. It's like, you know what? I'm cool. I'm trying to do the right thing, working in the store, not bothering nobody. This man attacks me and I get locked up and I get sick. Now nah, I'm good. I'm good. My friend, you dead. That's it. I go back. You dead. That's it. I go back. Anyway, let's keep on rocking and rolling. Shout out to my main man, Jose Alba. And that's why Trump went to that particular bodega because that's where Jose Alba worked. He was invited by the Bodega Association of America to speak to them and to speak publicly about crime in New York City and things that are going on. All right, now, shout out to DJ Academics. You guys may know who that is. Maybe you don't. Academics went to mar lago to interview Trump Jr. on Rumble. So shout out to him. If you guys don't know, DJ Academics is a really, really big figure in the online urban sphere. So him going to mar lago talking to Trump Jr., that's a big step. Really, really big step. Okay, it's, it's definitely happening. Now, Here's one of the jurors who was dismissed from the Trump case. And I think she was nearby the bodega when that whole thing kicked off. Can you share your opinion of, of the former president and, and, and why you felt <laughs> that you could be unbiased? Uh, I'm not a fan. Um, I, during uh, COVID-19, I lived with someone who was immunocompromised and I think his handling of COVID-19 was, uh, abysmal. Um, I also I have a sister who is adopted from China and um, 
the comments he made about China when he was running for president um, made her very anxious and therefore made me angry. Um, there are policies he has supported um, that regard uh, women and, and reproductive health that I do not agree with. Um, and I think all of that needs to be addressed. Can you share your... So this person could have been a juror on the Trump case. And um, what if she was? And you got to ask yourself, how many people like her are on the jury? Again, she's not a juror, but she could have been. She was called and got dismissed. But how many people like her are on the jury? And if this is any kind of indication of the kind of jury you're going to get, how are you going to have a fair trial at all? All right. How are you going to have a fair trial? You're going to have people that are biased. It is what it is. Now, speaking about the jury, um, let's talk about some of the jurors. We got uh, profiles of them. We don't have names or pictures, but we have profiles like uh, their age. I think we might, we might have race and what they do. Let's watch some of this and you'll be able to see kind of what's going on, shall we? Over half of the jury's already been selected. We already know a lot about them, and it is hysterical. Before we tell you about them, remember that this is a Manhattan jury. It went 87 percent for Biden. And the judge who's overseeing the selection process is a Biden donor whose family was paid by the Biden campaign. Yesterday, 50 white women wearing masks fled the courtroom, claiming they couldn't be fair to Trump. Anyone wearing a mask at this point is not an impartial juror. Here's one white woman who works in cybersecurity who was excused. Listen. Did you say you could be unbiased, though? I did. It's very difficult for anyone really in this country to not come to this with prior opinions. I think we, we all have prior opinions about the defendant unless you've been like living in a cardboard box. Show me a juror who says they can be unbiased towards Trump and I'll show you a liar. That's why we don't have political trials in America. Fairness is impossible. Trump's legal team was given the names of potential jurors and after Googling them, discovered there were undercover activists trying to sneak onto the jury. One juror couldn't recall any anti-Trump feeling, but when the defense showed him the receipts, he admitted he'd posted on social media, quote, Donald Trump should be locked up. <laughs> Another juror said he didn't remember posting anything bad about Trump. And then when shown the evidence, conceded to posting a picture that says, quote, Trump invites Thai boys to the White House. Thai boys request to return to cage. That's a pretty specific thing to post. I think there might be a little bit of projection on that individual's part. I think he might have been to Pattaya a, a few times and indulged himself. But I digress. Those two radical liberals got caught lying to the court and were almost seated on the jury. This is what Trump has to deal with. Yesterday, Clay Travis was criticized for suggesting Trump supporters get on the jury. So far, seven jurors have been seated. Here's what we know about them. The foreman, juror number one. He's a salesman from Harlem who was born in Ireland. He used to be a waiter, didn't finish college, and likes anything outdoorsy. He's married with no kids. His wife's in school. He gets his news from the New York Times, the Daily Mail, and some Fox News and MSNBC. You believe that? Do you think that someone can watch uh, well, with me, I'm a little different. I'm just a nerd like that. So I, I, I watch everything. I, I read everything. I don't watch news. I read news. Only time I watch news is when I do my videos. I don't, I read everything. I only watch news for the visual, for the video. But do you believe that he is from Ireland, living in Harlem, and he reads New York Times, Daily Mail, Fox, and MS-13 DNC? Never met anybody who watches both Fox and MSNBC, but okay. That guy's your jury foreman. Juror number two, a nurse from the Upper East Side with a master's degree. She's not married, has no kids, and lives with her fiance who works in finance. She gets her news from the New York Times, Google, and CNN. She said two things that really stuck out. One, quote, I don't really have an opinion of Trump. 
and, quote, no one is above the law. I'm not so sure about juror number two. Juror number three is a young Asian lawyer from Oregon. His corporate law firm features DEI on its homepage. He's single, lives in Chelsea, and was wearing a purple jacket. <laughs> okay, well, he, he, might, he might be LGBT, and that's fine. But what's his politics like? Is he going to be a fair juror or not? Nah? He claims he's not super familiar with Trump's other charges. <clears throat> he likes to hike and run and gets his news from the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and Google. Um, a little bit of FYI. His tie right now is purple. Jesse, his tie is purple. Just, just because I just wanted to show that if you guys didn't see. Juror number four is a Puerto Rican who finds Trump fascinating and mysterious. Quote, he walks into a room and he sets people off one way or the other. I find that really interesting that this one guy can do all this. Wow. The guy was actually born in Puerto Rico, lives on the Lower East Side now and works in I.T., He's married and he has grandkids. Wife's a writer. Previously served on a jury but says he doesn't remember the verdict. He gets his news from the New York Daily News, the New York Times, and Google. Anyway, juror number five. A black woman in her 20s who doesn't follow the news and didn't know Trump was facing charges, any charges, anywhere. Is that possible? I'm not quite sure. If you if you are on TikTok and you listen to Charlemagne, I don't I, I'm not really buying that one. But it's possible because not everybody is really tied into all of what's happening. They don't really know all of what's going on. She lives in Harlem. She's a teacher. She's not married, has no kids and lives with her brother who's a basketball coach. She gets her news from Google and TikTok. She also listens to Charlemagne the God. Juror number six is a woman in her 20s who works for Disney. She made the courtroom laugh because she wanted to know if the trial would be over before September because she's a bridesmaid in her sister's wedding. She's not married, has no kids, and likes to dance. She lives with three roommates and gets her news from the New York Times, Google, Facebook, and of course TikTok. I can hear her voice right now. Oh my God, I'm going to the trial. I can hear her voice right now. I already know what it is and says she doesn't have strong feelings about Trump one way or the other. <laughs> okay. Juror number seven is a middle-aged, balding white guy with a tan. He lives on the Upper <laughs> East Side, and you guessed it, another lawyer whose firm is big into DEI and ESG. He's originally from North Carolina, married with two kids, and his wife works at a bank. He gets his news from the New York Times, the Journal, the New York Post, the Washington Post, and he listens to NPR. You already know what it is with that guy. New York Times, Washington, uh, Wall Street Journal. You already know what it is with him. A at best, he's one of these um, Ben Shapiro types. At best. At worst, you're dealing with a whole liberal. So that's the jury of Trump's peers so far. The fate of a billionaire real estate tycoon, TV celebrity turned 45th president of the so that's just the ones that they know so far. Of course, there's going to be 12, but they know the profile of seven so far, at least on this video right here. So shout out to Fox and Jesse Waters for that. But yeah, it's going to be difficult to get a fair trial. New York City is New York City. It is what it is. If you want me to live in New York City, you got to pay me big money, big, big money to live in New York City. So it's going to be hard to get a lot of conservative people that are going to be there, or even if you're not conservative, fair people. All right. People might just kind of be influenced by whatever the media says. If the woman listened to Charlemagne and Charlemagne says that Trump should get locked up, she might take his word for it. Hopefully not, but that could be what's going on. All right. There's more here. I want to show more from the bodega. Okay. Let's uh, play. Let's play this right here. Shall we? So the people are loving them outside the bodega, Harlem, New York City. And some are going to say, oh, that's just Trump supporters traveling. 
it looks like you got regular people to me. People were outside their houses, like because you got a, a, a apartments and stuff right there. People were hanging out of their windows, all kind of stuff to see Trump. All right, people were really, really excited to see my man, one hundred percent. All right, they they were really excited. Let me see if I can pull another one up here. All righty, and let's see. Okay, I got that one, and then there was another one I wanted to pull up. There's another one I wanted to pull up because it showed like a bigger view. Yeah, it showed a bigger view. And then we're going to keep on rocking and rolling. Yeah, that might be it right here. If you like what you're hearing so far, please give the video a thumbs up. Like the video, share the video, do all that good stuff. That'll help me out tremendously. Quite a big crowd out here. Check it out. So you see it's like it's buildings and stuff right here. So people are in their houses and it was a building like right up against the bodega. People were like hanging out the window to see Trump. People right there in the window, you can see them. So everybody loving the president. Shout out to Trump. You know, it is what it is. All right. Shout out to him. Now, some people, for some reason, don't like Trump. Some people don't like Trump like uh, your man Joe Biden. Let's talk about Joe. Let's, let's show him. Now, this guy, I mean, you couldn't be any older. I know everybody ages. No one lives forever. But good grief, man. At this age, I don't think you should be out here doing this. Not this kind of job, all right? It's, it's nothing wrong with, get, with getting older because we all got to do it. All of, us, all of us must age, but good grief, man. Like, all right, if I was playing basketball at 25, if I'm not going to know 40, I might want to figure out something else in my life rather than trying to play basketball. If I'm 8,000 years old, if I'm a whole vampire, if I'm immortal but i'm not immortal maybe i shouldn't be the president i'm just saying president trump has spent a lot of his time this year in a courtroom he directly blames you president biden as being responsible behind those prosecutions how do you respond to that his lack of ethic has nothing to do with me i have nothing to, i have not once talked to anyone in my administration about trump's legal problems a lot of them occurred well before i became president and so I have nothing to do with that. Former President Trump has spent a lot of his. I mean, this guy. Really, he looks he looks terrible, man. It's, it's like a fossil, a walking fossil right now. And there's more. Let's check this out. The one that offends me the most. Is when he refused his president to visit an American cemetery outside of Paris. When he was president. Why? He said that those soldiers who gave their lives were, quote, because his quote, suckers and losers. Suckers and losers, he said it. Who the hell does he think he is? Who does he think he is? These were heroes. These soldiers were heroes. The one that so there you have it. That's, that's your man, Joe. Joe. Joe does not like Trump too much. All right. Getting that old man anger up out of there. Now, um, speaking about some of these uh, woke places where people watch and listen to news, NPR. Now, NPR has a brand new CEO. Her name is Catherine Mayer or Maher, like Bill Maher. It's spelled the same, M-A-H-E-R. Um, she just became the CEO, I think, last month in March, 24. Now, listen to what she's saying here. This is pretty woke. And this comes right on the heels of someone kind of whistleblowing on NPR about how woke they are, about how there's no Republicans, it's all Democrats, it's all leftists, and their left-wing bias has kind of ruined their integrity. Check it out. The number one challenge here that we, we see in, is, of course, the First Amendment in the United States pro, is a fairly robust um, right, 
that. Did you hear that? Let's let's rewind. I want you to hear this clearly. This is again the new CEO of NPR, Catherine Mayer. The number one challenge here that we we see and is of course the First Amendment in the United States. Pro the first challenge we see is the First Amendment in the United States. Why is the First Amendment a challenge? I don't understand. Why would freedom be a challenge? The number one challenge here that we, we see and is, of course, the First Amendment in the United States pro is a fairly robust um, right, uh, protection of rights. And, and that is a protection of rights both for platforms, which I actually think is very important that platforms have those rights to be able to regulate what kind of content they want on their sites. But it also means that it, it is a little bit tricky to really address some of the real challenges of where does bad information come from and sort of the influence peddlers who have made a real market economy around it. So basically, um, the First Amendment, it gives us the freedom to speak and send out information. And she apparently wants to control the way that information is sent out. That's like communists. That's what they do. Very communist. My, you might as well go to North Korea, where there is no freedom of speech and everything is state run. NPR is often seen as a state sponsored news, quote unquote, news outlet. So she wants to lean into the whole state sponsored thing. First Amendment, hey man, that kind of sucks, man, because we can't really control things the way we want to. And she doesn't want people like me to have a voice. She wants to be the, the lone voice. And when they get things wrong, when they put out false information, ah, oh, it's no big deal. Oops, sorry. That's kind of how they want to do it. Again, that is Catherine Mayer, the brand new CEO of NPR. All right, now, here is a guy. Um, what's his name? Yuri Berliner. Now, Yuri Berliner was or is still an NPR employee for 25 years, and he's a whistleblower talking about how biased and how much the company has lost credibility due to their left-wing bias, okay? Here's a statement from him. All right, it says, he says, with declining ratings, star levels of trust, and an audience that has become less diverse over time, the trajectory for NPR is not promising. Two paths seem clear. We could keep going or doing what we're doing, hoping it'll all work out, or we could start over with the basic building blocks of journalism. We could... Face up to what we're face up to where we've gone wrong. News organizations don't go far for that kind of reckoning, but there's a good reason for NPR to be the first. We're the ones with the word public in our name. Now, what happened is that he's been suspended from NPR after he blew the whistle about what's going on with NPR. And when he says that they've become less diverse, what he meant is in uh, your politics. It's just one kind of person. It doesn't matter what color you are. It's about what kind of person you are. You're just a leftist, left, 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 who hates Trump, who wants to wear the mask. It's all like one kind of person. Not always because a guy like me and some of y'all, we're going to read everything because we want to know what everybody's thinking. But generally, typically, the average NPR viewer is not going to be conservative at all. They're going to be liberal. I would say that's probably 95% of their base is liberal people to all fit in the same way. So that's less diversity. You want to be able to have everybody watching or listening to you. If you are a news station and you're legitimate, if you only have one side and that's it, it's like, where's the legitimacy at? It's kind of weird. All right. So yeah, no tax dollars for NPR. I agree with that. No tax dollars, defund NPR. They shouldn't be publicly funded. If they want to be a news outlet, they want to be a news station. They want to editorialize. That's fine. But let them do that on their own dollar. You know, I'm not trying to get tax money from the federal rallies. I want to do things on my own. If I want to get money from private companies, doing ads, uh, get money from YouTube private company. Okay, that's fine. If you guys want to support, that's totally fine. But I don't want to have the federal rallies in my pocket. Even if they offered me the money, I wouldn't take it because I don't want to have that level of control because with that kind of money, has strings attached and I don't want the strings attached to me because at that point I'm no longer independent. I'm no longer alternative media. I'm state media once I'm state funded. So I don't even want it at all. 
They, they could offer me the sun, moon, and stars. I'm good. Listen, the feds could offer me the sun, moon, and stars. I'm good. No, thank you. Oh, ABL, we're going to give you some money, and there's nothing you got to do. Keep on doing what you're doing. I'm like, okay, whatever. You can tell me anything. Tell me them a sweet little lies. Okay, now speaking about songs and music and whatnot, John Cougar Mellencamp had a little meltdown during and uh, during during the show, he got triggered um, about somebody in the audience not wanting to hear him lecture about Joe Biden and his love for Joe Biden. Check it out. Yeah, real quiet. Hold on. Yeah, real quiet. Let me start from the top so you can see what's going on. And here we go. Yeah, real quiet. Oh. <laughs> Let me start from. So, in case you guys couldn't hear it. And then he, he says, and then it got real quiet. And somebody says, just play some music. I don't want to hear this lecture. It got real quiet. Oh. What do you think I've been doing, you sucker? Now, here's the thing, man. You don't know me. You don't fucking know me. Sorry for the loud beeps. RIP to the headphone users because I'm over here suffering. I'm sorry for the headphone users. Hey, Joe, find this guy and let me see him after the show. Guys, I can... Hold on. He says, hey, hey, Joe, find this guy and let me see him after the show. You threatening me? Man, I'll stomp you in the wine. Not me, but the guy might. Let me see him after the show. Guys, I can stop this show right now and just go home. Tell you what I'm going to do. Since you've been so wonderful, I'm going to cut about 10 songs out of the show. Here we go. A little did it. Got Jack Diane. Two magic kids going up in our land. You know what? Show's over. <laughs> oh, man. Just get triggered. Rage quit. That that's crazy. I guess again, he was going into a little diatribe about his love for Joe Biden, and the guy was not trying to hear it. Play some music, man. Anybody trying to hear you talk about Joe Biden? All right. So yeah, he rage quit, played Jack and Diane for about uh two seconds and walked away. All right. So yeah, shout out to him. <laughs> are, are you guys fans of Mr. Bellin Camp? Do you did you guys want to hear Jack and Diane? Did, did you guys want to hear him finish Jack and Diane? Or, or what's going on? Okay. Somebody says, reminds me of a drunk uncle. Yeah, he does have drunkle vibes. He most certainly does have drunkle vibes. And he could have been, he, he might be a drunkle for all we know. I've heard about some, some things I don't really know. But he most certainly could be a drunkle just on stage. <laughs> melon crap. <laughs> melon crap is funny. Henry, let's, let's keep on going here. Chick now, hold on. Um, did, did you guys hear this? The McDonald's CEO recently said that families making less than 45000 per year no longer visit their restaurants. Is that true? Hold on. I got to find that right quick. That's crazy. So 45000 if you don't make at least 45000 you can't afford McDonald's. Well, look. Okay, now I, I, I got to get to the right thing. So McDonald's president and CEO, Chris, um, some European last name I can't pronounce, said in a recent call that there were fewer visits and lower spending by customers earning 45000 per year or less. So that's not the same thing as what this guy said. Um, he noted that as grocery inflation has retreated, those customers are more likely to eat at home. Yeah. That's what I've been doing. I've been eating at home. I've been eating at home. It's expensive. I mean, McDonald's and other fast food joints, they're no, they're no longer cheap. You go to McDonald's right now, you get a chicken sandwich and a small fry, you're spending $10 off the, off the rip. No drink, $10. That's what, that's what you're going to spend. You live in California, forget about it, $20. It's crazy. It's totally crazy. But let's watch this. This is about Chick-fil-A, though. So let's watch this. I'm not sure why the person captioned McDonald's, but let's let's check it out. 
All right, and here we go. Chick-fil-A has officially lost a loyal customer. My order today was $40. Four zero, $40. This whoa, 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 whoa. This woman ordered food from Chick-fil-A and the tab came to $40. $40? Smallest shake you could find. Some grilled chicken nuggets. Some fries. That's all I ordered. Some fries. And some of their normal chicken nuggets. That's it. One meal and then an order of chicken nuggets was $40. Nope. Chick-fil-A. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I got a, I got a meme. $40. <laughs> Shout out to the, the excellent movie, Baby Boy, back in the day, if you've never seen it. I got to just play that right quick because every time somebody say $40. Let it go for about $40. $40. Ain't no way, man. Chick-fil-A, $40. What are you getting? I'm not trying to pay that at a regular restaurant, let alone Chick-fil-A. Has officially lost a loyal customer. My order today was $40. So, okay. I'm trying to see what she has. She has some kind of smoothie or something i think some kind of drink i don't know what that is four zero forty dollars the smallest shake you could a small shake some kind of salad or something right there fine some grilled some grilled nuggets and fries and a, and a sandwich chicken nuggets some fries uh -huh. that's all i ordered some fries and some of their normal chicken nuggets that's it one meal and and then an order of chicken nuggets was $40. So, okay, she got the regular meal. She got a shake. First of all, shout out to diabetes. This is not a really good meal. A shake. So you got sugar, sugar, salt, fat, sugar, salt, fat, breaded fat. So you got um, a chicken nuggets meal with fries, a shake, and grilled nuggets. $40. Ain't no way. <laughs> Ain't no way, man. No way. No way. No how. Listen, my Hello Fresh box. I can get in a Hello Fresh box for about forty five dollars. I can get enough food for four meals. And you went to Chick Fil A and got sugar, salt, and fat for forty dollars. Man, you you tripping? You completely tripping? But if you like what you're hearing so far. Please give the video a thumbs up. Somebody said it. Devin says, who eats both kinds of nuggets at one meal? You know, who does that big backs? If your back is about the size of a four F-150, you're going to eat that. Okay. You're going to eat the big back snacks. All righty. That's kind of how that goes. But you know what? What she wanted to do, you know what happened? I'm going to tell you what happened. What she wanted to do was get two regular nuggets, but she's like, you know what? I'm a, I'm on a diet, so I'm gonna get the regular nuggets and then I'm gonna get the grilled nuggets. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to watch my figure and be healthy, so I'm getting the regular tendy style nuggets, regular breaded nuggets, and then I'm gonna get the grilled ones for my diet. That's how that goes. All right, but yeah, you're still eating big bag snacks regardless of what. Because that shake right there, it ain't nothing but sugar. You might as well just take grain lid of sugar and pour it in your mouth. And get a little bit of water and swish it around. That'd be the same thing. Anyway, I'm getting triggered. Check it out. This is about a New York small business owner. And she filed her taxes. Oh, man, taxes are crazy. You guys know it. I'm going to get to the whole tax day kerfuffle in a minute. But taxes, my goodness. Goodness gracious. I had to. So I had to pay and pay you understand I had, to, I had to send two checks so i had to i owed money from last year because i paid quarterly and i did not pay quite enough for my quarterly so i had to pay a little bit more it wasn't too much more but it was more and then i had to pay my quarterly my new estimated quarterly which was higher than my last year's estimated quarterly i guess it's a good thing i made some more money but it, i gotta pay my estimated quarterly plus my other taxes Thousands of dollars I got to pay every three months. It's a mess. But check it out. Let's see what her story is about the taxes. April 15th. I just had $20,000 taken 
from my bank account. 14,000 to the IRS, 6,000 to the state of New York. And while I knew that this was coming, I just have a question. How are people supposed to survive in this economy? I've been running my business for eight years and I've never had to pay this much in taxes. And granted, maybe we made a little bit more. I just feel like everything is just going to shit. I used to pay $400 to fill up my oil tank. It's now costing me $1,400 to fill up my oil tank. $400 a month for my electric bill. $5,600 a year for our car insurance. Two cars. Not fancy, extravagant cars. Not like $1 million coverage. Hold on. How much was insurance? Let's go back. $400 a month for my electric bill. $5,600 a year for our car insurance. Two cars. Not fancy, extravagant cars. Not like $1 million coverages. We have comprehensive, we have collision, no accidents, no tickets. We've had this policy for over 20 years. Hey, guess what? Tennessee, no state income taxes, baby. No state income taxes because check it out. Every now and again, I'm sorry for the freeze frame. Every now and again, I have the bright idea to move to Georgia. Yeah, I'm going to go to Atlanta. Okay, now I got to pay state income tax. How about not? I live right here, right on the line. And be close enough to wherever I got to go. Nashville, two and a half. Atlanta, a buck and a half. And I'm good money. No state income tax. All you got to pay is a higher sales tax rate than Georgia. But it's not that much different. Our sales tax here is 9.25. But in Georgia, it's like 7 point, 7 7.5, something like that. And the trick is, the game is, we go to Costco in 4.0 in Georgia 20 minutes away so you get the lower sales tax out there i could go down to georgia and buy certain things and bring it back up here if i really want to and the sales tax ain't that big of a deal i mean if you're buying a mattress or some kind of a car or something like that yeah it matters but beyond that just regular everyday shopping it ain't no big deal no state income tax in tennessee this policy for over 20 years the taxes on this house eighteen thousand dollars a year do I want to leave? Wait a minute. 18. Hold on. 20 years. The taxes on this house. $18,000 a year. 18,000, 18 bands a year for property tax. How are you affording that? Okay. I'm going to tell you a little bit of inside baseball. You ready? I won't reveal too much about my personal situation. My house costs a little bit less than 400,000. My tax on it is automatically in my mortgage. It's like two grand a year. Here. Do I want to leave New York and Long Island? In a heartbeat. I would leave like that. The only reason that we are still here is because of family. Because my entire family lives within a five mile radius of us. My kids are very close to their cousins. I'm close to my siblings, my parents. And Man, look, check it out. You can always visit. Check it out. You can always visit. If you honestly about family and whatnot, you know, I got family in Virginia. If I want to go back to Virginia, I drive down to Hartsville, Jackson, hour and a half, hop on the bird. I'm back home in an hour. It's fine. It's fine. You don't have to live there because your family's there. All right. Most of my family is not here. They're in Virginia and West Virginia. It's a, it's a drive or a plane. It's fine. You got ways to travel nowadays and you're going to save so much money that a plane ticket will be nothing. You're going to listen, your state income tax, six, six grand state income tax. You can take a portion of that money and go back to New York four times a year and still got money left. And that's really difficult for us to leave. How much longer can you actually stick it out? And I know a lot of people are going to watch this and be like, you have a beautiful house. You have nice cars. I'm not complaining. I am very thankful for everything that we have. But I am terrified from my children's future and even from mine and my husband's future. As a small business owner, when can we retire? We don't get a pension. Our retirement is saving in our IRA or life insurance. Am I going to be working until I'm 73 or 74 years old? My family is more important. I would rather struggle financially and be around family than be living, you know, with no money worries and being, you know, a thousand miles away from. That's it, man. You, you better than me. Look. Okay, what do you guys think? If you had the option, option A, struggle financially because of family. You want to be close to home, 
close to your meemaw, your pawpaw, your kids and whatnot, you want to be close to home. And we're talking about adult kids. We ain't talking about little kids, adult kids. Or option B, move away with no financial worries. What would you do? Option A or option B? My family. So our taxes are $18,000 a year now. What are they going to be in five years? It's not like the county is going to come to us and be like, oh, for every year you're in the house, you're going to get a fucking discount. They just keep going up. I'm so thankful. We don't have credit card bills. Everything that we do, we do for our children. I'm working 70 hours a week. I should be able to be like, you know what? I want to go on a vacation for a week and a half. Last summer, we had one vacation booked, Ocean City, Maryland, and we ended up canceling it because I'm like, I can't see spending $3,000 to go to Maryland. Fuck has money to even go on vacation anymore. I'm not saying I don't have the money for a vacation. I'm saying I would be stupid to pay these prices for vacation. I hate when people say, oh, it must be nice to do this and that. Everything we have, we work for. And we're still working. I'm going to be 50 in September. My husband's going to be 50. I'm like, let's go away to Bermuda. How much it costs for the four of us to go away to Bermuda? And we can only go in the summer when everyone's off. Over $10,000. You only live once. I get that. I get that. I can't in my right mind spend that much money knowing that a week and a half later, it'll be gone. All about the memories and everything like that. I don't know. Stuck in between a rock and a hard place. I mean, it's very simple. You're talking, talking, talking. But at the end of the day, you know, you know what this, you know what the solution is. You live in New York, so you got to pay. You want to stay in New York next to your family. You already said it. You, you, you rather struggle financially and live in New York than move away and not struggle. That's your fault. You have the means to be able to move. You have the ability, the job, the finances, the resources. You got your house. You got, you got equity probably. So that. I'm not paying no $18,000 a year for taxes. Are you Are you dumb? I'm not paying no state income tax. I'm not paying exorbitant uh, personal property tax. I'm not doing any of that. I live down here, down south, I'm good. My house, two grand a month for, pardon me, two grand a year for my personal property tax out of my mortgage payment. My payment is less than two grand a month for my house. And I only put 3.5% down, okay, that was 2020, but now even still with the high interest rates, you can still get a pretty good deal like that. I'm not saying come out here. I'm not telling her come out here. She might want to stay up there in New York. I say for her, yeah, stay in New York because obviously you're not doing the right thing by yourself, and that's part of your fault. You know, your husband might want to come move down south, but you don't want to do it. It is what it is, all right? So, yeah, shout out to New York. Somebody said world's tiniest violin, exactly. Yeah, right on. All right, let's keep on rocking and rolling. If you like what you're hearing so far, please give the video a thumbs up, like the video, share the video, do all that good stuff. That'll help me out tremendously. We were okay. Here's something I want to show you guys. This this is pretty. This is pretty funny. Um, this is about CBS. Uh, about about the WNBA. So we just saw, uh, the the college basketball games. The women playing. And I think the best player in the tournament was Caitlin Clark. And she got drafted number one overall to the Indiana Fever, I believe. Now, her salary is $75,000 first year. This is a thing that can't really be negotiated. It's part of the uh, WNBA's CBA, Collective Bargaining Agreement. That's just standard. You draft number one overall, you get a set salary, you get paid $75,000. Now, some say, oh, that's not enough. She deserves to get more. She works so hard. All this and that and the third. Now, I'm going to play this and see what they say. And I'm going to give the, the real spiel about the economics of the WNBA. This is a dream come true. Like, these are the moments you dream of. This could also be the moment the WNBA professional sports has Sorry been for that. Sorry for that. I'm messing up. RP to the headphone users. This is a dream come true. Like, these are the moments you dream of. This could also be the moment the WNBA and women's professional sports has been waiting for. I think the more eyeballs you can get on this league, you know, the better off this world's going to be. The Indiana Fever select Caitlin Clark. It was a ratings record when nearly 2.5 million people tuned in to watch as former Iowa guard Caitlin Clark was drafted by the Indiana Fever. When you look at the amount of revenue that the NBA is, is getting, they could move some of that money to the WNBA to invest. $76,000 is, is not enough for someone you are looking to be 
the face of the league going forward. No other professional sports league would do something like that, and it's a shame. The 22-year-old's endorsement deals in college were worth more than $3 million. She'll now get a base salary as a rookie capped at $76,535. Last year's NBA number one draft pick, Victor Wembenyama, earned over $12 million. But the revenue from both leagues is not comparable. Last season, the WNBA brought in a reported $200 million, oh, look at this. while the NBA took in an estimated $10 billion. Clark's popularity could spark a change, enabling the player to get more revenue in their collective bargaining agreements and TV broadcast contracts. Both are up for renewal this year. Um, obviously, the new media rights deal that can be negotiated can be life-changing for a lot of players in this league which could be a welcome slam dunk for everyone. <laughs> a slam dunk? That's so corny. Jerika Duncan, CBS News. Now, let's talk about the reality of the situation. The reality is that the WNBA, they make, they make no money. Without the NBA, without the men's basketball, there would be no WNBA. The NBA is basically using the WNBA as a charity organization. That's what they are, a charity organization. They don't make any money. Nobody watches these people. They don't make any money. College sports, as far as women's basketball, is better than the WNBA. Also, in college, she might have made $3 million from endorsement deals. That's not a salary, though. See, in college, they have the name, image, like, name, image likeness. You're able to get money from endorsements, basically. That's how that works. You could get paid that way. And she'll have the same thing, the same ability when she goes to the WNBA. If there's enough eyeballs on it, people are watching, but ain't nobody watching. And a lady talking about, well, um, the NBA makes so much money, take some of that and invest. The, the, the NBA already invests in the WNBA, and the WNBA has never, ever made a profit. They always lose money. They lose millions upon millions, tens of millions every year. They are a lost leader. It's a charity organization. They suck. And there's a few other things. First of all, when you're comparing the NBA to the WNBA, here's some facts. The NBA plays 82 regular season games, each team, 82 regular season games, not including the playoffs and all that. Regular season, 82 games. WNBA, 40 regular season games. So less than half of the games. Also, the viewers. I read, and it might not be accurate, it's probably less than this. The WNBA averaging $500,000 500, viewers per game, which is probably not that much. On television, 500,000 viewers a game on TV, probably lower than that. The NBA, 1.6 million viewers per game on TV. And again, you have 82 games per team versus 40 games per team. Then you only have 12, 12 NBA, WNBA teams, just 12 compared to 30 NBA teams. So the volume is just different. Look, you got 30 teams, 82 games per team, 1.6 million viewers it's a worldwide thing. The 1.6 million is just U.S. The NBA is big overseas as well. NBA has played games in China, Europe. It's all over the place. It's an international game. The WNBA is not quite that way. There's more money for these women overseas. That's why Brittany Griner got locked up in Russia because in the offseason, she was going there to play basketball because it's a bigger bag over there because they're able to get some Americans when usually they can't do that. Whether they be male or female, you got an American, okay, that's, that's, a, that's a good thing for your, for, your, for your country. To have American basketball players is a big thing. But over here, nobody watches the WNBA. That's why the money ain't there. So everybody wants to make money and be equal, all this, that, and the third, but they don't understand economics. Basic, basic economics. It's really simple. And the game sucks. Have you ever watched... Have you ever watched that the NBA is getting bad now because all they want to do is chuck up threes. They all they want to do right now in the NBA is chuck threes and miss. <laughs> but the WNBA, oh my goodness. 
missing layups, just really bad basketball. It's bad basketball overall. It sucks. It, it's really, really bad. But anyway, um, here's another example of somebody not understanding the way things are. Now, Kirsten Dunst complained about not making it much as Tobey Maguire and Spider-Man. Now, Kirsten Dunst was not Spider-Man in Spider-Man. But you know who was? Tobey Maguire. But she complained about not getting as much as him for Spider-Man. I'm not making it up. Let's watch. Hopefully, the way I carve my path will help other, you know, actresses. And But I definitely grew up in a time with major pay disparity between um, the lead actor and myself, even though I had been in Bring It On and he hadn't. You know what I mean? Okay. I had more success in my box office than he did. And I was 17. I'm still learning. You know, when you're that age, I'm still learning my taste in film. I didn't even think to ask. I didn't even know what there was a place to challenge it. That's how it felt at 17. So Kirsten Dunst thinks that she should have been paid as much as Tobey Maguire for Spider-Man. You know what? I got a tip for her. If you want to get paid like Spider-Man in the Spider-Man movie, try being Spider-Man. Just maybe that might make a sense. That, that might make a difference. Maybe you marry Jane. You're the girlfriend of Spider-Man. Try being Spider-Man and you might get paid some more money, huh? I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying. I don't think Uncle Ben got paid the same thing that Spider Man got paid. All right. I, I mean, it's just we could just add some numbers, do some math, and use basic common sense. It's the same thing when a WNBA player says. They should get paid LeBron James money. Ma'am, you are not LeBron James. I just seen LeBron James do all kind of stuff. Le LeBron is my age, great beard and all, out here doing reverse dunks. I mean, just crazy stuff. Until I see a 40-year-old WNBA player go out there and do um, a, a standstill dunk just and, and hammer it home, I don't want to hear a word. I I'm not trying to hear it. But anyway... Yeah, let's not be delusional anymore in 2024, shall we? That's not really a good thing to do. All right, let's keep on rocking and rolling here. Um, oh, I got to play this. This is Molly Ringwald. Those All right, and I got some commentary about this. RP to the headphone users. Let's watch this. Movies, the movies that, you know, are I'm so well known for, they were very much of a time, you know, and and if you were to remake that now, I think it would have to be much more diverse and it would have to be, um, you know, it, you couldn't make a movie that white <laughs> now. No, those movies are really, really very white. <laughs> and, and they don't really represent, um, you know, what it is to be a teenager in a school in America today, I don't think. So, you know. But, but I think that they were really great, you know, and they were of that time and they really represented John Hughes's experience. And that's what he, you know, he was writing to his own personal um, ex life experience. Now, Molly Ringwald is an actress. Was she in the Breakfast Club, the original Breakfast Club? I think she was not the urban radio show. Um, what was she in? You guys know. Uh, Facts of Life, Different Strokes. She was a child actress in those shows. But what was she? No, Breakfast Club, 16 Candles, uh, Pretty in Pink. Like, these are 80s movies. So if you guys are kind of young, you're not going to know about these movies. Um, and then she was in some other stuff. But I think she's most known for Breakfast Club in the 80s. Okay. So she's saying that there's a lot of... Um, Movies, movies back then that wouldn't have been made today because they were too white. Let me tell you what's going on. Um, first of all, I want to say this. I don't have an issue with white movies or black movies or whatever. It's fine. Okay. If I'm watching Dunkirk or something, it, it should be white. And even if it's not about an historical piece, it's okay for the entire cast to be white. 
most movies that you see are going to be one race or kind of close to one race. But I'm going to tell you what they do now in Hollywood. What they do now in Hollywood to increase diversity, aside from the occasional uh, racially ambiguous, you're a Zendaya or something like that. What they do is they put in LGBT. That's the new diversity. That's the new black in Hollywood's eyes. So in Hollywood, you put in a bunch of openly gay characters. I have a drag queen. That's seen as diversity because they are seen as minorities the same way as a black person is. That's Hollywood nowadays. So um, a movie today, you could have, let's say the main cast has five people, five central characters. You could have all five be white, but one got to be a flaming LGBT. That's how they operate right now. And if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. If I'm wrong, let me know. But that's what I've noticed. Look on Netflix. Look, if you want to just happen to be, you want to casually just peruse Netflix and find a show and it's pretty good. It's, it's, you know, it's hitting on all cylinders. All of a sudden, one day, it's going to be a Drag Queen Storytime episode. I saw that one time. I said it before. I was watching the show called Sandman. And I don't know if it's mostly white, black. I don't even know. I think it's mostly white, but I can't really remember. But anyway, I'm watching the show. It's pretty good. High fantasy. Okay, I like it. Good production, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. And one day, for no reason, I think one of the main characters decides to put on the drag outfit and do a whole show. You, you go from high fantasy, um, angels and demons and all kind of stuff, to now wearing this random club doing the drag queen performance. That's their idea of diversity in 2024. 100%. But I digress. So, yeah. You don't got to be... You, you could be all white, but you got to be gay, too. That's that's the that's the catch. That's the catch. That's, that's how they get you. But I'll move on from that. And if you like what you're hearing so far, please give the video a thumbs up. Like the video. Share the video. Do all that good stuff. That'll help me out tremendously. Speaking about diversity... You got to be diverse on the, um, on, on the, on a, on a track and field arena. You got to be diverse in sports, including an LGBT dominating the entire pack. Look at this. Look at this. Now tell me who stands out from the rest. Tell me who doesn't belong by watching this. Tell me who isn't quite right. Tell me who still has their twig and berries. Tell me who does not have the chromosomes of everyone else. Check it out. Well, I mean it. Jaden Vanderveen in seven for Bergen Episcopal. Abby Olson. Out very well is Gallagher of McDaniel in lane two. We're going to see Gallagher later on in the relays. Great knees. Great drive. Man, if you don't get Richard Simmons, if you don't get this... Um, <laughs> This this nut job off the track. Look at this. Do you see this? This is high school. Gallagher, the victory here. Now look, look at this. Do, do you see? Come on, man. All the girls are pretty much bunched up together because they're they're women. They have XX chromosomes. They're not men. And you see this dude all the way in front. Come on, man. What are we doing? Gallagher of the victory here in section number one. 25-49. Man, go ahead. Now, look. <laughs> um, There's so much I want to say. First of all, high school, I can't tell. But maybe he is high school. I mean, a high school boy, 16, 17 years old. Yeah, you're looking a lot different than the girls. That's like 14, 15. You're looking a lot different, sir. If he used to go out there and race against the, the men, the boys, he would not do very well. But against the girls, you're doing very well. Look at this guy, Aiden Gallagher, whatever kind of name that is. He came in at 25.49. The next fastest person came in at 30.77 like over five seconds in between him and the next fastest person who's an actual woman this is crazy 
It's totally crazy. But that's what you, hey man, you can identify as whatever you want to identify as, right? That that's that's diverse. That's diversity. Okay, he black and he is LGBT. That's that's a double time diversity. They do that a lot in corporate America. They, they do that on television a lot too. Okay, I was playing the video last time and I was like, what's missing? Because it was a panel featuring Joy Reid and some random white lady and this black dude. And I'm like, what's missing from the panel? You got black woman, white woman, black man. But what was missing was a heterosexual male. When you're talking about corporate America or really TV, talking heads, they can um, kill two birds with one stone with um, a gay and black. Like Corinne Jean-Pierre. That's how they do. We're diverse two ways. We got an LGBT and we got a non-white. There we go. Two birds, one stone. So you want to be a heterosexual black male getting on TV? Good luck. <laughs> you go to Fox, but that's about it. You want to go on CNN, MS-13 DNC? Good luck. Okay, you could be Don Lemon and get a show. Gay black male married to a white man. That's totally fine. Straight male? Nope. Nope. Okay. And if you're going to be a straight male, you got to be a, a stone cold stomp down liberal, or you got to be a guy that they can get something from like um, Chris Cuomo was until his brother got removed from office. And when his brother got removed, then he was the next one to, to leave. If not for his brother not being in office, then Chris will still be on CNN. But since his brother was no longer there, then Chris has no more use. You see how that works? Anyway, I'm getting triggered. If you like what you're hearing so far, please give the video a thumbs up, like the video, share the video, do all that good stuff that helped me out tremendously. Okay. Now, there's so much I want to show, but I'm running out of time. I want to show one more thing here because this was pretty important. Pastor Mark Driscoll. Now, I know there's a lot of history behind this man, but I don't know a lot about him. You guys who are into the church and the scene and whatnot know a lot about that. Shout out to my my, my preacher home back in Virginia, he was talking about Mark Driscoll and he was saying that there's a lot of stuff about him. I don't know about the story about Mark Driscoll and his church and what he did before, but what he said here was right. Now check it out. There was a man's, pardon me, a, a men's retreat. Um, the Stronger Men's Conference in Springfield, Missouri. This is a Christian conference specifically and it's about you know, how to get men closer to God, be better Christians, right? It's a men's Christian conference, Springfield, Missouri. So you're going to have Christian men there with pastors, everything else. Now, there was all kind of forms of entertainment available, and a lot of it was cool. It might have been truck stuff like that, just regular dude stuff. But somehow, some way, a... Um, a sword swallower, a male sword swallower and stripper was able to go to the conference and perform on a strip pole with his shirt off in front of the crowd. Okay. Now, obviously this might not be appropriate for a Christian men's event, unless they are trying to say that Christian men enjoy stuff like this. Maybe I'm just out of the loop. Maybe the new Christian man might enjoy a dude with a shirt off swallowing swords, but I hope not. I hope I'm not, putting that on y'all, but let's see what Pastor Mark Driscoll said about the whole situation. Check it out. But let me do this. Um, I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. Now you can see at the bottom of the screen, this is the guy performing. Okay. This is, this is a poll. This, I've seen women do this. Little pole tricks. This is pole dancing. All right. Now, I don't know about y'all, but if I, if I go to a Christian men's conference, I don't want to see pole dancing. And I definitely don't want to see a man pole dancing. It's like, sir, put your shirt on, take the baby oil off, and get off the stage. All right. I, I'm not here for that. I left Atlanta for that. If I, if I wanted to see some, some pole dancing, I would go to a strip club and I would see Diamond or Secret or Ebony get on the stage and really do some, some work. I don't want to see you 
and your muscly chest swallowing swords on a pole at a Christian men's conference. I'm getting triggered. And I want to be very careful with this, and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. So what happened right there was the pastor who organized the event, the entire conference, John Landell, he says from the back, you're done. You're done. He says, okay, I'll receive that. He put on his hat and he got off the stage. He was kicked off the stage for saying, hey, that wasn't a good thing to have a man with his shirt off, get on the pole and dance in front of us at this Christian conference. He was um, kicked off the stage for saying that, for saying the exact right thing. Now, the other guy with the microphone is John Lindell, who was the same one that told him to go off the stage, you're done, and he's the organizer of the event. So at a certain point, I would presume that John Lindell was on YouTube and was searching for something to watch and was like, you know what? This looks great. Let's go ahead and get this sword swallower and male to dance on the pole at the Christian Men's Conference. That'd be fantastic. And I'm upset that my man is on stage saying that it was a bad thing. I talked to Mark for a half hour. There was not one word of that. He's out of line. If he wanted to say it, he could say it to me. You may not agree with me. You may not agree with him. But we are brothers in Christ, and there's a right way to handle this. So he's citing, he's he's citing, he's um citing scripture, Matthew 18. And he's saying that the scripture says, if your brother offends you, then you basically tell him in private. But here's a couple of things. First of all, he offended you just now, and you're not saying it in private, so you're a hypocrite, first of all. Second of all, that's not what it says in the scripture. Really, you're kind of mis you're misusing the scripture. The scripture basically says, if there's an issue that I have with you that is said in private, I can, communicate, I can, I can talk to you that way. But we're talking about a thing that was done publicly. We're not talking about a thing that, only I know, or it was done privately, I could come to you the same way. But if it was done publicly, I'll come to you that way. The same way that you came at Mark publicly. Now, I got to add one last piece before we get to the calls. Um, I was reading some of the comments, and then some of you guys said that after this, they were able to get back on stage, talk through it, and make up, and everything's all good. Okay, so they were able to fix their differences, I suppose. But to have the guy on stage dancing, I don't know who had that bright idea. Uh, na uh, uh, not naked, shirtless, pole dancer, sword swallower. 
that kind of guy comes to a Christian conference. I know we got new age stuff going on. I understand. But I think that might be just a little bit too far. Just a little bit too far. I know we got pastors wearing Gucci suits and uh, Patek Philippe watches and all kind of just random stuff, black, white, whatever. I know we got that going on. That's one thing. But that, I mean, come on. What is the difference between the church and the world at that point? Again, I can go down at Atlanta and see that. I don't got to go to church. I want to go see, and I'm, I'm not trying to see a dude on stage. It's like, good grief. If you're going to put this in my face, at least get one of the girls that I can recommend. I got a few girls. Hey, yeah, you want to come to this Christian men's conference and shake your hind parts? Yeah, it's, it's paid too. We got plenty offering money. If you're going to do something crazy, at least do something crazy that's right. Don't put a man in my face. Okay, I'm getting triggered. If you like what you're hearing so far, please give the video a thumbs up. Like the video, share the video, do all that good stuff. That'll help me out tremendously. I didn't get to the Atlanta voting or the Dubai flooding, but I don't got no more time. I want to get to a few calls. Super Chat's on deck first. Okay, let's uh, check this out. Oh, they don't want to show me right here. I got to go to the back. I got to go to the back of the back to find the Super Chats. Uh, let me do that right quick. And again, you guys are the best. Couldn't do the show without you. Let me see the Super Chats, and then we'll get to the calls. The number to call, 434-658-1220. Again, 434-658-1220. Thank you to AM1, who says, Yo, ABL, salute, hashtag, sir, sir, sir. Thank you to LXDX. I raised that one already. Thank you to Medi, who said, Did you see the news of Trevor Bauer's accuser being charged with felony fraud for the fake grape allegations? Thank God she's being held accountable. I did see that. And that needs to happen a lot more because that kind of allegation can ruin someone's life. It really can. So if there's a false allegation, it should be treated as seriously as the allegation being real. Okay. So whatever the penalty is for someone being convicted should be the penalty for a false allegation. In my opinion, they could a chocolate chip cookie for the emoji donation. I appreciate you for that. They could have read lover who says I commented a couple of weeks ago that Mark Levin said we're in a brick of world war three. Has your opinion changed on this? I believe it's only going to take a small push to get there. I don't, my opinion is pretty much the same. I don't think we're quite there. I, I, I understand why you may think that because of the way things look now. You got Iran and all that kind of stuff going on, but I don't think we're there. Thank you to Regina, the godmother who says, what's up with Joe's eyes? Can he see? Why is he always squinting? He can't see. I don't think so. And he's just super old, so he might have that permanent, that permanent Clint Eastwood squint face. That, that might just be him at this point at a thousand years old. Okay. I think once I get to be 100 million years old, once I get to be a vampire on borrowed time, I may also have a scrunched up face like him. Michael Crislow says, shout out to Virginia for being the first Southern state to abolish child marriage. Love it for the, in the nation. Shout out to you. Thank you to Man of the Face who says, strings are always attached. I've worked for myself and made my own money since I was 27. Keep spitting the word. Thank you for your donation, boss. Definitely appreciate you. Thank you to Angel Rivera who says, hey, ABL, here's a small tax contribution. I'm sending the package your way. Hope you cherish its content. Yes, New York tax is high. Shout out to you, boss. I appreciate you. And thank you to Slender Randall Charman for your emoji donation. I most certainly appreciate you. And thank you to Lawfare who says, what's your opinion of Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul? Are you looking forward to it? Um, I'm not looking forward to it, but I do want to watch it. Just because I'm I'm curious at this point, you know? I'm curious. Thank you to Boomhauer. almost missed this one. Boomhauer says, man, look here. Got to get to work. You better get off this bridge with you and your homies. I'm redlining all over this protest on this bridge with the truck and the exhaust emoji, 100%. Okay, uh, man, listen, pedal to the metal. Vroom. All you're going to hear is a coyote just just, just roaring. The coyote going to roar. All right, did I get everything else? Um, I got a one I got Medi, I got Chocolate Chip Cookie, Reader's Lover, Regina the Godmother, Rocco Critchlow. Okay, I got everybody. And also, Lothair says, what's your opinion about the weather underground? I have no idea what that is. No, none whatsoever. I'm, I'm totally, I'm, I'm lost in the sauce. I don't know nothing about that. Okay, 
I know I'm late. Don't blame me. It's not my fault. Blame the white man. But let's get to the calls. The number to call is 434-658-1220. Again, 434-658-1220. And there's an email for Skype in the description. If it doesn't work right, don't blame me. Blame the white man because it ain't my fault. Let's get rocking and rolling. Again, a number to call, 434-658-1220. Let's go to... Y'all give me a second while I fix my sound before I answer the call. And there we go. I think that should do it. Let's go 206 you're online. Who am I speaking to? Hi, this is Joy. I just wanted to get your thoughts on the um, consumption of America by China. On a what now? Consumption of America by China. Um, what do you mean? Like consumption, like as far as uh, them being at the, the new global power, taking over businesses or they're just... They're buying up all the land. They're buying up all the land over in uh, mostly farmland. Well, I think it's all part of the game, all part of the plan. They want to buy whatever they can buy, businesses, land, whatever, because they want to be the new global power. And the way they can do that is by acquisition. Like any other company, you grow by acquisition. That's what they want to do. And um, it's going to take us to stop it because there are certain states passing laws that prevent that from happening, that stop it from happening. Yeah. Yeah, it'll take us to stop it because if we don't stop it, it'll, it'll keep on going. It'll keep on happening. They are literally buying up all the land. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah, we we, we got to stop it. It's definitely a problem. And if we don't stop it, we're, we're done. We're toast. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Appreciate you. That's a good question. Yeah, I remember um, when China bought Smithfield Foods some years ago because they had a um, a plant in Virginia. I remember that when it happened. It was crazy. I was like, they can do that? They can buy an American food company? Doesn't that put our food in a compromised state if the if China owns it or if a Chinese company owns it? That's definitely an issue. Let's, get, let's keep on going here. 843, you're on the line. Who am I speaking to? Uh, I guess I didn't answer quick enough. Let's go to my next one. 859, you're on the line. Who am I speaking to? Hey, Bill, how's it going, bud? It's all good. How about yourself? I'm just playing GTA with my friends, listening to ABO. Just chilling out. I was going to ask you a question. I, I, this, is a, this is a weird, uh, curious question I always wonder from people. Uh, why is politics is um, described as more of the left versus the right instead of a more of a nuance on different philosophies? Why is it always in you know modern day politics, especially there's always one versus the other instead of this a uh, huge spectrum of philosophies itself? <clears throat> because your average person does not operate like that. The average person does not have the capacity to get into a deep political conversation. All they usually know is like a one issue thing, abortion, gun rights, that kind of stuff. And it's usually a party line thing. <clears throat> well, that I understand. I think there's more of a nuance on different, uh, uh, different philosophies and stuff like that in, in different ways and stuff like that. Cause you got communism, socialism, anarchism, you got libertarianism, you got right wing philosophy, left wing philosophy, there you got Marxism, you got Fritz and Nietzsche's. Uh, you, you, you get my point. And, and uh, I, I, the problem is, I think the ignorance of our country is that we're so focused on, you know, the left versus the right, that we forget about the, the certain issues that we have in, in the world, and different ways of how to fix them without the, the whole, <clears throat> sorry, I have something in my throat. <clears throat> the whole like, you know, party lines getting in the way. And I think it's a huge distraction, in my opinion. That's why I just, I, I'm very, I haven't really voted left or right ever since Trump became, you know, was running for president. I, that's the first, like, Republican I voted for. And Bush was, to my opinion, horrible because the guy was very pro-war. And I think it's kind of interesting. Why is it the right wing now <clears throat> that's now against war that used to be, they used to be pro-war back in, you know, the Bush administration? What's your opinion on that? On, on what? On what exactly? On uh, the position of uh, usually the Republican Party being the pro-war party, but now it seems like Biden is like 
the Bush administration all over again. Well, I mean, it's, I, I think what's happening is you're getting more of a uni party type thing happening in the federal government because a lot of the GOP on, on the Hill that don't mind the war either. A lot of GOP, we don't mind funding Ukraine. We don't mind funding Israel. So a lot of us are pro-war oh, too. Geez. We're just kind of becoming one party on a federal level, which is why another reason why I hate the federal government because it's becoming one big powerful entity like, and, and, and the states are having fewer and fewer rights. And, you know, ever since I was younger, I was always against Bush and the anti-war. I was pretty much of, you know, the left side. And I, I now I'm, I'm, I'm highly against the Democrats now. They're the most biggest hypocrites in the world. They Every time they touch a community, regardless if it's the black community or the LGBT community, they always leave it the worst. No joke. It seems like the left is now making, you know, people like me look like a bunch of chomos, <laughs> sadly. And then also corrupting your, corrupting, you know, on unpo- like very impoverished neighborhoods. <clears throat> right. And this huge self-destruct, uh, self-destructive, during, during the, the Clinton, uh, Clinton uh, era, it wasn't, that wasn't the case. Was it, was it, what, what's your opinion of the whole big change of that? <clears throat> it, it changed the weight now. That the left used to be somewhat reasonable, but now they have some gone so far left that they kind of make Stalin look centrist in comparison, sadly. I don't even know how that happened. I don't even know when. I think, I, I don't even know how <clears throat> that happened. It's just really weird. You, you wake up one day and the left has just gone really crazy. I think there were some things that happened, like uh, Trump, that was a big turning point and when the left. The left, they were kind of crazy before that, but then when Trump came along, it really kind of accelerated their craziness. And a lot of people, a lot of the young people raised on these uh, mind altering substances. A lot of these drugs are put on Ritalin and, you know, you got, you got little kids on drugs. Of course, when they grow up in a part of society, that's going to create an issue with how they perceive the world. So I think part of that could be it. Well, kids are very manipulated, uh, you know, very, very, can be very easily influenced. I will say. Right on. So, hey, thank, I thank you very much for the call, man. I thank you very much for taking my questions, and and I appreciate it, man. Lucifer and Libertarian now. Got you later, bro. Thank you for the call. Appreciate, appreciate it, bro. All right, shout out to the call. Shout out to you guys. You guys are the best audience anywhere on these interwebs. If you like what you're hearing so far, please give the video a thumbs up. Like the video. Share the video. Do all that good stuff that helped me out tremendously. Yeah, a lot of you guys said Obama. Obama, that was a big turning point, too, for sure. Absolutely. That was a big turning point when he came into office. There was a lot of race stuff going on. And it just, it kind of just progressed. You know, it's like, it's like one of those things where you, you can't, sometimes you can't really see it. And you just, if you sleep and wake up one day, things are changed. Social media, that was a big difference as well. Uh, a lot of these apps, TikTok, oh man, TikTok came along. That's the Antichrist. Good grief. That, when that came along, that accelerated it more. Yeah, people got this TikTok brain, can't pay attention for more than a, a few seconds. You got to get them right away. Yeah, I, I know that all too well. 843, you know, line. who am I speaking to? Hey, BL, this is uh, Rocco calling from Rural Beach, South Carolina. How you doing, brother? It's all good, man. What's going on? Good. Um, just a quick little thing out to your fans and everybody. I love your show, but uh, I don't know if you've ever seen Jeff Foxworthy, but uh, he's actually uh, dressed – Walter up just like Biden and he does a little political schmick with with Walter and it looks identical to Joe Biden do a little side by side comparison so I love to see that but anyway um what I want to ask you about is hold on hold on hold on one second one second you got we got a little bit of noise in the background turn speakers down for me please okay sorry about that is that good all right you can go ahead yeah yeah, did you hear about what I said about Jeff Foxworthy and and dressing Walter up look like Biden? Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Shout out, shout out to Jeff Foxworthy, good good comedian. He's hilarious. Um, anyway, uh, I I want to chime in on that clip you showed about that woman in Jersey, uh, about her you know taxes and everything she's having to pay on her property and everything. You know, down here in Myrtle Beach, um, there's a route that we you know used to go up now because my mother lives in another county. And it would be nothing but trees. I mean, just, you know, trees, trees, trees everywhere. And as of the past two years, you ride down that same route, there's nothing there anymore. It's all cleared out. 
they are building like crazy down here. And unfortunately, you know, if somebody wants to move somewhere else, that's great. I have no problem with that. You know, but the explosion down here on the building is like I worry about just a total collapse in the economy and everything just shuts down. The other thing is people that live down here, you know, the, the wages down here aren't, aren't anything like New York. You know, I used to live in Pennsylvania, and I made twice the amount of money an average worker can make down here. And unfortunately, you know, you have gas prices and our taxes are pretty high as it is. But these people come down with all this money when they sell their properties, and they buy these, they buy all these houses, or they buy four or five condos, and it just makes it really hard on us economically wise. And uh, I just wanted to get your get your take on that because I know where you're at in Tennessee. I've actually thought about moving to Tennessee from here because it's getting crazy. When I first I rent an apartment. I first rented my apartment, it was eleven hundred dollars a month. It's almost up to thirteen hundred a month now, and I just rent. And, you know, I just think it's a shame that, you know, everything keeps going up, up, up. And I wonder where the, the ceiling ends. When when does it end and kind of equal out for us, you know, in other areas? Because not all areas are the same. But I just want I want to give you a shout out. I love your show. You ever come down to Myrtle Beach, man? You love it. A lot to do down here, man. And uh Keep up with the good work. Appreciate it. Thanks for the call, man. Definitely appreciate you. All right. Yeah, man, it's crazy out here. These uh, these prices for for your living is, is getting out of control, but that's it. it's part of that inflation. And depending upon where you live, yeah, the main thing for me, man, that state income tax is a killer. Yeah, I can't I can't do it. No state income tax where I live. All I got to do is pay the federal rallies, and I'm trying to pay them the least amount possible, the least amount yeah, I don't got no money. The feds, according to the feds, I don't got no money. I'm broke. <laughs> yeah, it's a mess. Yeah, where I live, I, I like Atlanta, but where I live is perfect. It's like the perfect balance. I don't have to be, I'm not in the big city. I'm not in a small city. I'm just right where I need to be. The The price is right. The cost of living is good. It's good. Okay. Yeah, George, somebody said George is full. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the traffic down there in Atlanta is crazy. Where I live, it's not too bad. We got we have some traffic here, like closer to downtown because of the, the the geographical challenges. Because you got all these mountains that's like right here, so you can't really expand too much. It's a mess. But once they were able to fix it, knock some of these mountains down, maybe we can kind of get the traffic a little bit better. All right, let's keep on rocking. Tariq, what's going on? Ariel, man, I, I don't know if Trump is going to get a fair trial in Manhattan, man. It's it's It seems to be rigged against them, man. I, I don't think you can find an impartial juror in that state. And then they got gag orders to stop him from talking about the corruption, man. Like, I'm hearing the judge donated to the Democratic Party. The daughter is actually uh, work with the firm trying to slam Donald Trump. I mean, and then you got Alvin Bragg just continually threatening Trump. You know, they won't even allow the man to campaign, man. So this is like a kangaroo court. Uh, this is some third world stuff. And, you know, how, how can the United States keep... This is the problem I have with this country, man. Because we go around telling other countries, you're not democratic enough. You got you got elections where y'all arrest your opponents, Um Y'all don't allow the people to speak yet. In this country, we are actively trying to take away the people's right to choose a president. And it's and it's so in your face, man. They're not even hiding it. It's one political party doing this. And then you got the entire media cheerleading. And then you got the never Trumpers who don't really care about the Republican Party. The only thing they care about is which country we're going to invade next. You know, that that's why that's why you see a bunch of never Trumpers siding with the Democrats or not even caring if the Democrats win because they don't care about the borders, they don't care about free speech. They don't care that Christianity is is being is not being taken seriously. All they care about is invading people. So yeah, man, I I don't know what Trump is isn't going to get a fair trial, but I do hope what comes out of this trial is intelligent people, especially independent people, can see this for what it is, and hopefully this boosts Trump. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is what's happening in, in Congress with uh, Mike Johnson and this Ukraine bill. 
So I don't know if you heard um, that he split the bill in four. So he's 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 going to allow a separate vote on the Israel aid, the UK aid, the Taiwan aid, and I forget the other country. But here's the problem with that, man. The 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 problem with that is the Republicans stated that not a single dime is supposed to go to Ukraine without Joe Biden or the Democrats approving border security, meaning we're not going to fend, defend someone else's borders while our borders is under attack and being invaded. Yet Mike Johnson, you know, frustratingly, and here's why I do side with Marjorie Taylor Greene, is going to put that bill on the floor for a vote. And he knows that all of the Democrats are going to vote for it and some stupid war hawk Republicans. I don't think there's going to be enough Republicans to vote that bill down and it's going to pass. And once again, this shows why the Democrats are so better calculated and more organized than the Republicans because the Democrats don't bend for nothing. They're like, border wall, get the heck out of here. We ain't giving you no border wall, but what you are going to do is you're going to put that bill on the floor and y'all are going to vote for this U U Ukraine funding. And then what does the Republican Party say? Well, we got to be the leaders of the free world so we can't let down our allies. They're, they're so weak. It's so frustrating to me because it's like, man, this is why you guys don't win. Y'all have no standards. The Democrats never, just think about it, ABL. When do the Democrats bend for us? When do they ever compromise? They all they give us hard no's and they will stretch something out until we give in. It's always the conservatives that gives in and is so infuriating. So at this point, man, I do support Marjorie Taylor Greene ousting this guy because it's just enough with the lip service. We don't I don't want to hear Mike Johnson talk about Biden's boarding crisis and open borders when you got the power the 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 leverage that you have is to present to the american people that joe biden is holding up spending bills because instead he wants to take care of foreign countries other than securing our own border how powerful is that to say to the american people that that is a winning message who you you got to be an idiot to think that okay it is right to support Ukraine over America. But the Republicans don't want to fight on that. It's so like that is an independent winning message that could win black folks in Chicago and New York who are dealing with this illegal immigration problem. But the Republicans, they just have no tactics, man. And I hope that the conservative base can see this because, man, these traders got to go. If you're going to put a foreign country and their interests and their borders above our own, Republican or Democrat, you got to go. We're not dealing with this lip service no more. So, yeah, man, that's the other frustrating thing going on in Congress. We have to wait and see that if there's going to be enough Republicans to vote it down. Mike Johnson's having these backroom deals with Chuck Schumer. And, yeah, man, that's 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 all I got to say, man. It's just I, I'm, these Republicans bending over backwards for these Democrats. While I, I'm still yet to see the Democrats give the right or conservatives anything. It's, it's, it's so weak, man. And that's all I got to say. Thank for the call, man. Appreciate you. All right. Take care. I mean, very well said. Yeah, the, the left, they don't bend. They don't break. They don't fold. They stand 100% on what they want to stand on. There's no there's no nothing given. You don't get anything. That's, that's the reality of the situation. And nobody can tell me that he's lying. Not at all. 479, you're on the line. Who am I speaking to? Hello, Abel. It's uh, Darko from Serbia again. I wanted to ask you two things. Uh, first one is, uh, have you ever done sports betting? I've not. Uh, do you know how it works? Um, A little bit. Like, you have to bet over... Can you, yeah, go ahead. Can you, can you give me odds for uh, Trump winning the election and uh, Biden giving, uh, winning the election in uh, percentage-wise? Percentage um... Wow. Maybe 60% Trump, 40% Biden? 
I want to hear a reason, a uh, non-biased reason why you believe that. And uh, one last thing, because I have to hang up. And I hope that Ivan guy calls in, because uh, I want to hear you destroy him, because I have a friend over, and I'm, this is the first time I'm uh, showing you to him. So I hope that guy calls in so he can destroy him. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the call. Yeah. I appreciate it. All right, shout out to my man from Serbia. Uh, he wanted to know why I think, the way I think about Trump versus Biden. Um... The reason why is because people are able to see what Biden has done. That's the thing. People are not pleased with Biden's performance. So they may want to go back to what they had. Sometimes you don't know what you have until it's gone. So you already got people that don't like Biden that didn't want him to win from the beginning. Now you have those that voted for Biden who regret your decision. And you have new voters who don't like the way the country's going who see Trump and they know what Trump did and they want to vote Trump. So I think that'd be what puts them over the top. I think that's the reason is because people, the main thing, people already like Trump. They are going to vote for Trump. And then others do not like Biden. That's why. And also one more thing, a lot of states have tightened their laws up. So you're going to have less of an ability to cheat. People are kind of worried about that. Are they going to steal it? Well, do you live in the state where they tighten the laws up or not? It's not a national election. It's a state election for national positions. So each state has got to tighten it up. You can't just cheat nationwide. It's got to be a thing that's done city to city, state to state, not on a federal level because there are no federal, just one election. It's each state, each city, each individual place. They got to tighten their own laws up. Where I live, we have pretty tight elections. Georgia has tight elections. They tighten their laws up after 2020 and that whole disaster. They tighten their laws up. This is why Brian Kemp is so popular here because we know that he has been doing the right thing by us. And I say us because I live right here. Okay. I live right on the line of Georgia. So I'm like a, a, a two state resident kind of two one five. You don't line. Hey, ABL. How's it going? It's all good, man. What's happening? Hey, um, I don't, I don't mean to ask about another caller, but you, that I've been just the guy Tariq. Does he have a YouTube channel? I think you you mentioned he had a channel or something. He's on Facebook. Oh, he's on Facebook. Oh, that's it. Uh, as far as I know. Oh, all right. Oh yeah, because I thought he had like a, the way he was talking. I thought he had a YouTube channel. I was like, I've been trying to find his YouTube channel. I'm like, I like that. I I, I agree with everything he's saying. He don't tell no lies. He's and I agree with. It. Especially what he said about the Republicans. I've noticed that about the Republicans. That's why I switched to independent. I'm like, because when I first started voting, I, I signed on to be a Republican to vote for Trump. But then I just saw how soft they were. And I was like, you know what? I don't even like these people. Donald Trump and I say Ted Cruz and uh, Ron DeSantis and who else? Oh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's about it. The rest of them, I don't, I just don't care for them. Right, I hear you. And it's like they're just all talk, and like like somebody like like everybody says, they're always on defense, always on defense. It's like, dude, you guys gotta just start playing offense. Like, listen, when Democrats want to play, well, not play dirty, but listen, when Democrats want to bring up stuff, y'all bring up stuff. Like, for instance, every time they bring up January six, you guys gotta get out there and bring up what happened back in twenty twenty. I'm talking about the summer, the alleged summer of love. Y'all got to bring that stuff up. And who incited those riots? Like with that time when they tried to impeach Trump, they said, okay, well, if you're going to impeach Donald Trump and charge him, you got to, you got to charge these people as well. Cause who, who also incited violence? And then all of a sudden look what happened. They decided to, to acquit him. Right. Like these, these people, man, I honestly, I don't even like the Republican party anymore. There's certain people I like in there, but the, just the party in general, the majority of them people got to go. And uh, who was it? Liz Cheney, Dick, Dick Cheney's uh, daughter. She had, they said she was voted out. I said, I was a like, good riddance. It's, but I forgot, is Mitch McConnell still there? Barely. He's, um, he's pretty much done, but he's still in office. Oh, yeah, because I was about to say, I don't see him like that. I rarely see him anymore. Yeah, because he's getting way too old and he's not really doing very well in my opinion yeah it's time for him to go too yeah like they say they, like like i agree with what you said term limits we just need term limits 
get so many people out of office, and that's it. Exactly. And get people who want to represent the people and just keep funding all these silly wars that ain't got nothing to do with us. Right. Thanks for taking my call, though. Thanks for the call, man. Definitely appreciate you. All right. You have a good night. Same to you. All right. Shout out to my man for the call. Most certainly appreciate him. Yeah. Mr. McConnell, I mean, <laughs> he, he didn't. He probably won't be seen too much because whenever you see him, it's like something's wrong. Yeah, glitching out exactly way to road. Mitch McConnell, you see him, he'll just be freezing like it's like I mean, at a certain point, you can't you can't do these things forever. Term limits, please. You're a thousand years old. Just go ahead and just stay at the house. I mean, you can retire. You don't have to work at 85 years old. Really. You don't have to work. It's okay. You can just stay home. Four four three. You don't know who I'm speaking to. Hey ABL, this is your friend L from Baltimore. Unfortunately, all righty, what's going on? Glad to be talking to you on the show tonight. It's been it's been a minute since I last spoke, but great to be here again. Right on. Yeah, so I, I had this interesting theory that I was just chewing on while I was driving tonight. With all of these shoplifting incidents across the country especially in places like New York, Chicago, um, and L.A., and Baltimore. Um, I, th I think that uh, these laws that are benefiting only the criminals and not the citizens who have their duty of being able to protect themselves and the community being stripped away from them is, in a way, causing us to become a more um more to become more accepting of becoming a police state you know a lot of people are becoming more suspicious of other people because they don't want you know to get robbed to get their property stolen or you know have their shopping trip turn into baghdad over you know five dollar vaseline and ten dollar avocados they just want to be able to get into the store and get out but we have these hoodlums making it harder and harder for us to do so so we're um we have cameras on our phones so we're always ready to record other people we have ring doorbell doorbells um being installed in just about everywhere um what do you think about that you have a very good point that you're making and it's like we are kind of, we're inviting the police state. We're inviting a surveillance state, not just for security purposes, you know, recording everything, having ring cameras in your phone, but also in our in-home devices, just for ease of use. You got the, the uh, um, I ain't going to say what it is because I don't want nobody's device to get activated, but the Amazon automated device, the Google automated device, these little things you can say, you can say, hey, X, Y, and Z, call a doctor. Hey, X, Y, and Z, do this, do that. But the whole time, you're not realizing that you're being recorded because how can your device know that you're saying something unless it's listening? It has to listen. Right. They, and they got busted for that, for having a bunch of conversations on a, a cloud server that was accessed by third-party contractors. So that kind of thing is going on. So then people are wondering why, uh, you know, there's so much known about you. You're talking about these apps. You go on your phone. They know that you're looking for a certain thing because they, they know you. They listen to you. They watch you. And we're voluntarily giving them all this information. Right. Yeah. And, it, and I think it's one of the, one of the things where the, uh, our politicians, government, whatever, they're, they're creating a problem. And we are indirectly asking for a solution. They're just waiting for us to say, to run to them and say, hey, we want more security. But unfortunately, um, more security, most, most likely in my opinion, would be more freedoms being taken away, um, less freedom of thought, um, just more surveillance and just more suspicion. Um, some, something that's kind of related to what I'm talking about I have been realizing as I would consider myself to be, um, I guess, like late millennial, early Gen Z, that when it comes to social interaction today, I don't know if it's because of COVID or just how society is built now. Um, 
people aren't as open to chat as much. I know personally I'm an introvert, but I still like social interaction. Um, I think with all the crime and people not wanting to go out because of crime and other things, um, us as a country as a whole is it's going to be very interesting within the next five years. Oh, yeah. M- very much so. Yeah. And I, I mentioned my generation because, you know, we're, um, we're so into technology and we don't really have their spaces to just hang out anymore. And I know personally, I don't want to just hang out freely because I'm, I'm worried about crime, um, kidnapping, just, just crazy stuff. You just can't be anymore. I hear you 100%. And that's part of the, that's part of the way that they kind of get you because, okay, you have this digital environment and we're going to control that. We're going to surveil that. So yeah, I understand the concerns all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. But thanks for taking my call and have a good night. Thank you for the call. Definitely appreciate you. Bye. All right. Great call. Shout out to her. 773, you don't lie. Who am I speaking to? Hey, B. L. it's your uh, retired Chicago police officer, Clint. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, B. L. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, I'd like to answer one of the, your uh, super chat questions about the weather underground. If I may, you appreciate history. And it has a, uh, it has a correlation to what's happening right today. Um, the weather underground was part of the SDS, the Students for Democratic Society, during the 1960s. Those were all the students on campus that were uh, protesting the Vietnam War. But the Weather Underground, they were an offshoot of the Students for a Democratic Society in that they thought in order to get change, you have to violently and militarily break down America. So they were bombing students uh, campuses uh, around the nation, police stations and whatnot. They actually blew themselves up in a town home in New York City, and a couple of them died. And the, um, the leaders of them went underground. Uh, n- most notably was Bill Ayers and his wife, uh, uh, Bernadine Dorn. These were uh, two of the biggest organizers of, of uh, the Weather Underground. They were on the FBI's most wanted list for over 20 years, ABL. They finally, this guy Ayers was from the, uh, Chicago, by the way, the Chicago area. When they came out of hiding, they, they are neighbors with uh, Obama. When they came out of hiding, they actually were pardoned with a, just a small little fine. They never did any jail time. Uh, Obama announced his candidacy and everything else, had a party at their house. Obama was friend, his friends or were friends with them. And uh, they were both, after they came out of hiding, they were both professors, one at Northwestern, which was that... Uh, his wife, uh, Bernadine Dorn, was a professor at Northwestern, and Bill Ayers was a professor at the University of Illinois at the Chicago campus. Um, they believe in breaking down society. That's what they believe in. And these are the, t- the kinds of people that got into our universities and schools and are preaching that America needs to be overthrown. They want to overthrow our system because they were always a Marxist, communist Marxist organization. And these are the people that are are in charge of these things. These are the people that, you know, that we're fighting against. Let's make no mistake about it. They want to break down America as we know it. And that's their goal. And that's what they want to do. And that's what they have been doing. And all these things that have been going on in our society is, is just a, uh, you know, a way of them breaking, breaking down America. They really want to 
change the way our society works. And that's why, no matter what they say, they left the border open for people to flood in. That's why they act the way they act around the world. You know, that's why they exited uh, Afghanistan the way they did and leave all those troops, those, uh, you know, all that uh, armory over there and everything else. These are people that are trying to break down America. And, you know, you could Democrat, Republican, you know, these are labels, independent, libertarian. These are labels. We need to stop them. And what is our best chance of stopping them? Is voting for Trump. And Trump is, you know, running with the Republicans. So you need to vote Republican. If you waste your vote by voting independent, you vote for, you know, this person or that person, all you're going to do is going to keep them in power and you're going to get more of the same. And it is killing our country. It's wasting our money. And we need to put some kind of, you know, brakes on this. We need to stop this. That Our country is in the balance with this. And, you know, what the other woman was saying about other countries buying up our land, that is true. Do you know you cannot buy property in Japan without having another uh, Japanese citizen as part owner or part of the deal? Because they don't want Russia and everybody else coming in, buying up all the land. And essentially what you're doing is it's like buying up somebody's company. And the guy says, well, I started this company. It's my company. Well, you no longer have 51% plus of the shares. So you're out. And somebody could do that to our country. You know, I don't care what you say. I own 47% of the buildings in New York City. And that's what China's doing. And that's what these other countries are doing. We really need to watch out for the fox that is uh, decimating our hen house. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll wake up. That's my two cents, A.B. Thanks for listening to me. And I'll talk to you later. Thank you for the call. Definitely appreciate you. Thanks. All right. Fantastic call. Great way to end the show. Shout out to you guys for being here. You guys have been the best audience anywhere on these interwebs. I'll be back live again on Saturday, same bad time, same bad place, 8 p.m. Eastern time to right around right now, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Shout out to everybody for watching, retweeting, super chatting, whatever you're doing. I could not do the show without you. Thank you to the mods for keeping the trolls in check. I really, really appreciate that. And that will be a wrap for me. Do I have my super chats? Let me see if I do right quick. Oh, also, if you guys don't know, this is also an audio streaming podcast. It'll be available on your favorite audio streaming platform, whether that be Google Play, Apple iTunes, Spotify, etc. Link for that will be in the description. Or just go to your favorite audio streaming platform and search ABL Live. I should pop right on up. All right, let me see what I have here. Um, Let me see. Okay, now I see what he was talking about. Okay. So Lothair was asking me about the weather underground. I, I didn't know that. And then my retired Chicago police officer friend was able to answer the question for me. Thank you to John Garrett, who uh, gave me the, the the hug emoji. Thank you to Spencer T, who says, Anthony Edward, thoughts? Anthony Edward, you're talking about um, the basketball player, Anthony Edwards? Uh, I'm not sure who you're referring to. I'm talking about Anthony Edward, the the basketball player. Uh, he's he's amazing. That's um, a young Michael Jordan all day long. Yeah, he's probably one of the best players in the league, if not the best player in the league right now. 22 years old, yeah. Definitely a young Michael Jordan, in my humble opinion. Same same kind of body type, same kind of competitive nature, athleticism, same. Yeah, that's, that's Michael Jordan in 2024, absolutely. Thank you to Man of the Face for the, uh, the flying Superman emoji super chat. I appreciate you for that. And thank you to Michael Crystal who says, Fight Club was inspired by Weather Underground, okay? Didn't know that. All right, that will be a wrap for me. Shout out to you guys for being here. Again, I'll be live again on Saturday, same bad, pl- same bad time, same bad place, uh, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. And that will be a wrap for me tonight. But until next time, y'all be safe. I'm out and peace.